Ready? Meeting is being recorded. This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education and public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. This meeting is an in-person meeting at the location listed above, which is 870 Colfax. Questions may be submitted beforehand to liz.goodwin at bhas.org or presented in person during the public comment section as indicated in the agenda. Board members may be contacted through the emails listed below. Requests for special assistance, including for persons with disabilities, may be sent to liz.goodwin at bhas.org. I call this meeting to order officially at 5.34 p.m. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first item, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the roll? President Robinson. Present. Vice President Bowen. Present. Secretary Triplett, present. Treasurer Creighton. Present. Trustee Doyle. Trustee Rocket Martin. Present. Trustee Gavin. Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. A quorum has been established. Next, we have approval of the agenda. Prior to calling for a motion to approve, Dr. Butts has asked if we could move the closed session, which is normally at the end of the meeting, to right under, uh, as a first item of business, under superintendent. OK. And I, I make a motion that we approve the agenda with the noted correction or modification. I second the motion. I would like to make an amendment. Okay, so current, so what's the amendment that you're attempting, uh, tr Trustee Bowen? I would like to remove the CTE director position to go to back to committee and the broiler replacement discussion or report to go back to committee. So I would like to remove those so we can further discuss those items. Okay, so currently we have the motion that was in place by Treasurer Creighton with the support by Trustee Rockhead Martin. And what I'll do is I will allow for questions, comments, and concerns because it's currently on the floor for approval with the support from Trustee Rockhead Martin. And then I'll allow you to restate that as a question, comment, or concern. Well, if she already has a motion, don't you guys have to vote and then we go back in? Well, there is an opportunity for questions, comments, or concerns. Which one? Okay. Trustee Gavin. Okay, so I'm confused. Are we voting on moving the closed session or are we voting on taking the CTE director and so, the- So right now, the motion that is currently on the floor is approval of the agenda with the closed session directly under superintendent as the only revision. That was the motion placed by Treasurer Creighton and supported by Trustee Rockett Martin. Trustee Bowen was attempting to place a motion on the floor, but we're currently under Treasurer Creighton's motion. So I was giving Trustee, I'm sorry, Vice President Bowen's an opportunity to make his or express his concern as a comment to the motion that's currently on the floor. I'm still confused. Does that mean that that um, addition is a part of the motion no. or not at all? No. Okay, thank you. Were you removing your, did you not have an additional comment? That was it. Oh, okay. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns with the agenda as it stands? Right now, we vote on the motion to move the superintendent request to move the closed session on the agenda. So right now, the motion that's on the floor, and I want to make sure I'm clear, Treasurer Creighton, is to approve the agenda with the requested amendment from the superintendent to move the closed session as the first item of business under superintendent, correct? Correct. We do have some individuals that's in the room um, that um, we, we definitely should accommodate um, so that um, one staff report is connected to the other. And so it is most appropriate um, for us to make that change. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? All 
All right, Secretary Triplett. President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bowen. No. Wait. I was gonna say, are we coming back to my motion too? Well, if this motion passes, then there won't be coming back to your motion. Okay, no. So what occurred is that Treasurer Creighton put a motion out on the floor to approve the agenda as it stands with the amendment that was noted. Treasurer Bowen was attempting to make a motion to amend the agenda to remove some items, but we were already under the motion by Treasurer Creighton that was supported by Trustee Raquette Martin. You cannot talk. So I just want to make, okay. So we want to make, I just want to make sure everyone is clear on what we are voting on. We are voting on the agenda as it stands, which is the motion that Treasurer Creighton put out with the amendment of the closed session being moved under the superintendent. Yes. It was made. Madam President, I need to roll call. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of what they're voting on because there was some confused faces. So President Robinson, yes. Vice President Bowen, no. Secretary Triplett, yes. Treasurer Creighton. Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion carried. All right. Next on the agenda, we Madam have President, you have the floor. I would like to call file a complaint on the process of two items that are on the board. We did not follow what we often preach, and it is not acceptable for us to not follow that process that we preach in sending things to the committee. And it's actually naive and irresponsible for us to be discussing this when we did not send it to committee, have no cost analyst or anything. So I'm filing a complaint because I we did not follow board protocol and I would like to file a complaint on board report B2 and board report B3. Madam President. One second. So uh, Trustee Bowens, is that, is that complaint being filed against myself as chair? It's your self as chair. Madam President, okay. I would like to call for a point of order. We're discussing something that is not on the agenda currently. I understand. So what I would say, Treasurer, uh, Trustee Bowens, is with you, being that the board has approved the agenda as it stands, can you express your concerns in those particular items in discussion? Again, I filed a complaint where we did not send those to committee. And we often preach. Did this point of order. Excuse me. So I'm going to allow Trustee Bowens to, uh, to continue. I understand the concern expressed, but right now the board has approved the agenda. So when, once we get to those items, I'll Madam be sure President, to make sure you have the floor. Can you please read what it means when someone files a complaint? Are you meaning from the bylaws? When someone files a complaint with the Robert Rules of Order. Do you already have that pulled up? I can give you time to Google it. Okay, so we're going to present. Madam President, I would like to call for a vote of no confidence in our vice president of this board at this time. Second. So the a motion, well, I'm you actually person. have to, you would have, so I'm going to allow, I'm going to ask that everyone just pause for a second. Second. And you would need to amend the agenda to allow for a vote of no confidence. Is that what you are attempting to do? Madam President, I'm attempting to call for a point of order so that we can follow our approved agenda at this time. Madam President, there's been two motions filed on the floor, plus my complaint. I am now confused. First, it was to proceed with the agenda. Then it was a vote of no confidence. Then it was my complaint on the staff report okay. to ask chair. So I'm, I am, excuse me, mm -hmm. as chairman of the HR committee, I do have the authority and we do have the option to review the CTE director position. It has not went to our committee to discuss the follow-up. So as a chairperson, I do not feel that this should be on the agenda when we're forcing the hand. That's why I filed a complaint. Because Madam President, a, point of order, this is a democracy. So I, our I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask for everyone to give me the grace to chair and proceed and move forward with the meeting. I understand that you are filing a complaint against myself as chair, Trustee Bowens, which I do not take offensively, 
but the board has the authority to approve the agenda, which they've done. And so I understand that you have pertinent um, concerns that you would like to express. I do not have the authority to disregard the agenda as it has been approved. I will take your complaint against myself and make sure that I proceed with that as needed, but I cannot stop the meeting at this particular time for the complaint. And, and again, next, that is your right. Okay, the next step, um, sorry, can I speak? You have the floor. The next step, it's okay. also been a motion for a vote of no confidence and it was seconded by Trustee Gavin. Can we proceed with that? So we need to actually amend the agenda to allow for that vote. And is that the motion that you're placing, Tr Treasurer Creighton, you would like to amend the agenda to allow for the vote? It sounds like he's calling for that um, motion so, so I can support his motion of a vote of no confidence mm -hmm. at this time. Well, you, act you actually made the vote initially. So if you're withdrawing your initial motion, then you can do that. I just want to make sure that I'm hearing what is being requested of me. Madam President, yes. um, with all due respect at this time, I'm just asking to proceed with, with the, the meeting agenda. according okay. to the approved agenda. So I'll take that as a withdrawal of your request for a vote of no confidence. We will proceed uh, with the review of board norms. The Board of Education norms for Benton Harbor Area Schools. We will treat each other with respect. We will listen to learn. We will refrain from side conversations. We will use our time wisely starting and ending our meetings on time. We will challenge ideas, not people. We will ask questions when in doubt. There will be no surprises at the board table. Surprise. We will practice the seven norms of collaboration. Those are pausing, paraphrasing, posing questions, putting ideas on the table, providing data, paying attention to self and others, and presuming positive intention. Next on the agenda, we have public comment on agenda items. Is there anyone who would like to make a public comment on an agenda item? I would ask that you all give me an opportunity to read the public comment statement. Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on district matters. Today, there are two areas for comment on the agenda of which you may decide when to speak. Public comment on agenda items and open public comment. We request that each interested participant complete a public participation form using legible writing to ensure that responses are appropriate and properly focused. Per Benton Harbor Area Schools Bylaw 0167.3, which governs board participation at board meetings, we request that you preface your comments with your name, address, and group affiliation when appropriate. Each statement made by a participant shall be limited to a three-minute duration, and per our bylaws, no participant may speak more than once on the same topic until any other persons have had the opportunity to speak on that topic. Participants may remove their mask when addressing the board. Participants shall direct all comments to the board and not to staff or other participants. The board will listen, take comments and questions under advisement and not respond at this time. I, as president, will refer questions to the superintendent for research and response. Please ensure that your public participation form includes your contact information as requested. If you have specific questions for the board or executive team that require follow-up, Please email those directly to liz.goodwin at bhas.org. You have the floor. Uh, good evening, and I thank the board for once again holding this meeting. Uh, I come this evening because when we talk about the item of the board replacement, if I'm not mistaken, I would like to know who would go with facilities because I think this was brought about two years ago where we talked about this boiler replacement. And if this has been on the floor and you all have been here for two years or more and it has not been taken care of, something has to be wrong. So if 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 you're talking about a boiler that, and I remember because I was at the meeting, it was brought up two years ago, this boiler replacement. Uh, Mr. Triplett, you wanted further information on the replacement as well when we came a few years ago. And I say that because if there was no follow-up on something as crucial as the boiler replacement in the district where children are in buildings, something has been wrong. 
You know, once again, you know, uh, it has never been about me when I serve this community. It's been about these kids because these kids are the priority. They are the present as well as the future. And if we at times bring a narcissist behavior as well as an agenda that is not based on helping this children or this community, uh, it would be a detriment to moving us forward. You know, one of the greatest things that we can do as a people, if we're not going to serve people to help better their condition, we need to step down. Because you're, when you're in power and positions of authority, where you have the interest and the best interests of people and children at heart, and you allow your selfish agendas or agendas that others may put forth, if we cannot think right or uh, act for ourselves, it, you know, it's a detriment. And to those of you who understand what it is to have these children's best friendships at heart, I accommodate you, I appreciate you, and I thank you. Uh, I say that because I've been working for this district for a long time. This situation did not get like it did overnight. And in order to help these kids, you must understand what has happened here and you must be able to deal with reality. Reality. We can't deal with things that may appear, we have to deal with reality. Right now we have a fund that was given under the act of the COVID pandemic where we can put whatever in play right now. And when it comes to borders, we have to spend $5 million, which I know it may not even cost that to replace the borders, okay? We, can, we should get that done. Ain't no need. I mean, how would you even want that to be tabled? How would you not want that to be just given? You know what I'm saying? And when we talk about a CTE director, that's something that should have been put in place for years. We had all kinds of CTE classes. How can you expect children to proceed if they don't have no educational tools that'll take them, if they don't want to go to college, into the bands of society and be successful? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haywood. Is there anyone additional for public comment on agenda items? Okay, so can we do I dance to that music or what? <laughs> She's trying to get it to pause one second. You have to know ballet. Oh, I can do ballet. <laughs> all right, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? First of all, I would like to say happy belated birthday, Mr. Triplett. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to piggyback off of what um, Mr. Marvin said. Uh, my question is about the boilers, and he's right. We, we've been in conversation about these boilers for a couple of years now, even with this, the last superintendent that was here. You know, the borders are supposed to be needed to be replaced. They were inspected, things of that nature. Um, but my question is, why would someone vote it down? Whoever voted it down, why would you vote it down? Because this is a serious safety issue. It's a serious safety issue for the boilers. These boilers are dangerous. This is a safety issue, okay? If this was in your homes and you guys are dealing with the same thing, a, a defaultive boiler, um, maybe leaks or carbon monoxide leaks, or maybe even if it's explodes, exploding, would you take it to heart or would you just like, oh, okay, it's cool. I don't think so. I mean, anybody with common sense with the money and if it's, if it's the money thing, which I don't think it is, we got the state is in here, the feds are in here giving monies to Benton Harbor. Right, getting monies to Ben Harper's to fix the pipes and things of that nature. Why can't the school be included in that? They can be included in that. It's part of Ben Harbor. And these conditions, physical conditions for the children, hot in one part of the school, cold in another part of the school. I mean, that's mental and physical distractions for our children. You know. When we get too hot as adults, we can't think straight. <laughs> when we get too cold as adults, we can't think straight. So how do we expect the children to be able to think straight in these conditions, to be able to learn like they're supposed to learn in these conditions? It's unacceptable. And so I want to know why would someone vote this down instead of voting it up and get it fixed? That's one of my questions to you all because it's, it's, it's like a no brainer. You all have the children's best interests at heart. 
the safety, their safety is key. Walking up in here every day, not knowing what's gonna happen, that's ridiculous. That's stressful. So I think I, I, I would behoove you all to think about this more and, 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 and go ahead and, and vote this up like you suppose, do right, do what's right. Do what's right for the children. If you care, what you all say you do because you're sitting on this board, you were elected to do what's right. You were elected to do what's best for the children, for the education, let's do it. Let's get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment on agenda items? You have the floor. I hope some come out, some did, okay. <laughs> I don't know where my voice is. Uh, thank you all for this opportunity. Um, oh gosh, just recently, uh, to piggyback off of what a couple of the residents just stated uh, in regards to um, the old broilers, I remember being invited up by Dr. Townsell, then superintendent, to come and discuss some ESSER funds, ESSER funds or whatever, uh, about what we wanted to see these funds spent on. The uh, conversation about old broilers came up and it just made sense because there are a lot of people it, that, that has gone to this school that's about as old or older than I, and we shouldn't continue putting money into something that just needs to be replaced. At some point, an opportunity is, is, is upon us for a whole rate of things for our community. Yes. And if we don't come together, the school board, as well as city officials, instead of waiting until something wrong happens to come to run and now is the time for us to, to actually come together because there's too much money on the table for us to be missing out for our community. All the bickering, all that stuff, it just needs to stop and we need to take care of business, period. This property over here is the perfect opportunity to start building down. I heard the gentleman that was discussing the Esther Fund say that, well, it's, a, it's a, a 38 something million and it's a lot of money if we start building it may not be enough to finish it. Well, there, there's enough coming. And there's me and some other people been fighting to make sure it comes. I don't have a voice anymore. I mean, please. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to you guys to work with us. Stop working against yourselves. If it's progress you really want to see, we can build down this hill onto and tear this old structure down. Parking lot over here. I mean, it is time to think outside the box. Um, the old schools, some funding has come down from the government that makes it possible to do some other things with these schools, a, a whole array of things, museums, housing for our, affordable housing for our teachers, affordable housing for whatever, it's too many of them, community centers, we need them, we need to be creating more safe spaces for our children, or do we just let it sit in the laboratory? Mm. and wait until somebody else come along with the same ideas while we sit on the outside looking in. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment on agenda items? I just want to remind you there is a second opportunity for public comment at the end of the meeting, which is open public comment. If you do not wish to speak at this time, we're gonna proceed with the agenda, Appro approval of meeting minutes. The meetings that need to be approved are regular session 214, 2023. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. The motion has been made by Treasurer Creighton. Is there a second or support? Second. Um, February 4th, let's go ahead. So the motion has been made by Treasurer Creighton and supported by Secretary Triplett. Questions, comments, concerns, Trustee Bowen. February 14th meeting minutes need to be corrected. Okay. It has me as present when I was absent. It has me absent and present. Mm -hmm. You weren't present? No. You're right, because I was a bit tardy. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you for noticing that clarification. So what Trustee Bowens is 
um, calling to our attention is that there is actually a typo in the minutes that have him listed as absent as well as present. So the minutes would need to be amended to remove his name from those present on that particular day. Uh, Treasurer Creighton, would you like to amend your motion to approve the agenda with the noted corrections of removing trust, uh, Vice President Bowens from those present? Madam President. You have the floor. I would like to revise my motion and make a motion to approve the, the meeting minutes from February 14th with the noted correction. All right, and Secretary Triplett, do you support additionally? Support. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett. President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bowen. Abstain. Secretary Triplett. Yes. Treasurer Creighton. Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion carried. All right, so now we move into board business. I would like to remind you all of the protocol that we have established that all comments will be limited to two minutes per trustee per topic. Two minutes per trustee per topic. So that's as it relates to your comments. And I am going to be very diligent at watching the clock to make sure that we can keep our, meet, our meeting moving. The first thing on our agenda is a student representative update. And that is with our student representative, Jermel Jones. You have the floor. Uh, good afternoon, evening, everybody. Um, and hear you. Good afternoon or evening, everybody. Um, my name is Jamel Jones. I am the super, the student representative for Benton Harbor High School. And Madison couldn't be here because she had a uh, Miss Benton Harbor thing at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, she did leave a comment, which was, there's an issue with Michigan Virtual. Um, I think it's a terrible idea, idea as far as, a learn, as learning science. No one is learning, no one is passing. Mm. It's like we have been set up for failure, especially having to retake the exam. Mm. Um, my comments are, I'm gonna start with positive. So we have vending machines in the front. Uh, everybody love it. It's a good, good thing that they put that there. Um, also, teachers are determined to help us uh, do whatever we got to do to graduate and get fast what's done and stuff like that. Um, some issues are the boys' bathroom that's across the band room. The, it's not a soap dis dispenser in there. And the toilet that's like next to the wall is broken. Upstairs, both girls' bathroom sinks are broken. The stars locks doesn't work. And also upstairs, the boys' bathroom sink that's Close to the uh, Spanish room, Mr. Smith's room, that sink is broken. Like the whole thing is like broken off. Um, also, kids are, we are forced to retake classes we already took. So me personally, I did my uh, Spanish one, algebra one, and geometry classes prior years, and I have to retake it, even though I have the credit for it. And we we don't we don't we don't want to do that because it's just a waste of time. Um, we think we should either do classes we need to do or do what we got to do and go home. And yeah, that's all the comments I have today. Thank you so much for providing your insight to the the board. Um, a question that I have before I give the floor to anyone additionally: Do you share your update that you have with? Um, Dr. Buster Liz prior to the board meetings? I shared it with uh Ms. Goodman. I didn't I didn't send it to Dr. Butts though. Okay. Because we want to make sure certain concerns like things about the bathrooms, we sent out the agendas five days in advance. So that might be something that can be alleviated before um, we even get here once you bring it to our attention. Things like that are often a quick fix. And then the second question, I'll wait to curriculum for Trustee Bowens. With you guys taking the classes that you already took, have you guys went to your guidance counselor or the principal? Yeah, uh, Mr. Rosebrook brought it to my attention. He wanted me to bring it to the board. I didn't know about it previous, <laughs> other than me, but I didn't know everybody was doing it. Um, <laughs> Go 
are you aware of them doing those repetitive classes or has it been brought to your attention? It has, no, it has not been brought to my attention, but I do know, and that's part of my presentation this afternoon is getting our course selection guide ready to go early in the year so that we can have opportunities for students to sign up for classes that they wanna take. From the information that I've gathered, it has not been like that in the past. And so that has been my push is to get this done so that we can start getting kids scheduled now for the fall instead of waiting till the summer and putting students wherever we can fit them. So no, I was not aware. So my next question is, does that mean they're getting a credit for courses that they already took? They're getting. So what? I, because I was not aware, but I have to do some digging to, to find out what's going on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Treasure Craig. Madam President. Yeah. Um, thank you, um, Jamil, for your updates. I, I really appreciate them. Um, I guess my first request is, um, is it possible that you can actually share those things so that we can make sure that we follow up in the facilities committee meeting? Um, this is the first time that I've heard of that. Um, however, um, I appreciate that. And um, one of the things that I'm going to request is that we have um, a walkthrough um, with you if you're able to or with someone that can actually point out some of these things that we can make sure that they are um, fixed and the situations are corrected immediately. So I appreciate that. And um, excuse me, the other thing um, with the um, repeating of the classes, um, I just want to be clear. So are you saying like you, you, you pass Spanish one and then because it was not another class for you to take, you had to take Spanish one again? Yeah, so I did Spanish one. I passed it for a full year. I did it for a full year and I have to redo it again. Yeah. So um, are you, is there not another course that you can take that you're interested in, like an elective course? Um, or is it because you needed a better grade? I'm just trying to understand. No, I I passed like an A okay. or a B, something like that. Okay. And then the other follow-up, how, how much time do I have left? Oh, the other good. Thank you. The other follow up, um, Ms. Waddell. Um, oh, so one other thing that I that I guess I want to say is that um, I think, um, like President Robinson said, I think it'd be helpful that um, those things can go to the principal and then Dr. Buss can put together a chain of command um, so that we don't get a surprise at the board table and we can actually fix it. And we don't want you guys to have to. So I'm not by any means, you know, upset. I'm glad that you said these things, um, but I just want to make sure that you're getting the support that you need as well as a stu student rep, that you can send those things to us. And so I do appreciate that. Um, and then Ms. Waddell, um, from my understanding, we did approve a course catalog. So I'm not sure if that's something that, you know, or what's going on with that. I know that we even approved some independent study courses, some after school clubs and programs. And so um, I'm interested to hear, um, you, you don't have to right now, you can make a comment, but I did look at the agenda. So I know that you are bringing those things before us and I appreciate it. Um, and as we talk about you know, the CTE program and some other programs. Um, I think the situation that Mr. Jones is referring to would definitely um, be supported by career and technical education. And I think a lot of times we don't always know things. And so, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Like, for example, um, I've never taught English. Like, I don't know how to teach English. I don't I have a four-year-old. I don't know how to teach her how to read, right? Because that's not my area of expertise. And so, um, as we are building capacity within our district, um, I'm definitely looking forward to programs like career and technical education, which, by the way, is the move of the entire country right now. Um, back when I was in high school um, in 1999, we did. Ben Harbor Area Schools was the hub for that in this county. And, and you can Google that in 1999. And so as you think about those things, when I graduated from college, I was able to come back and work in human services and teach some of those CTE courses and teach teacher cadet. And so as I think about all of these things that are coming out, um, I'm not campaigning for anything. I'm just saying that we have a student here that has definitely shared with us reasons why, even if it's not CTE, um, obviously it's just the umbrella like ELA. Like I think people just don't know or understand, but it's a great way for high school students to be able to pursue things Treasure that they're Craig. interested in. It was a dialogue back and forth. I'm going to close out. 
But I just think that this thing is something that we definitely need to make sure that we're working with Ms. Waddell and whatever the programs and courses are, even if it's not CTE. Um, for me, I took an extra math course. I want students like Mr. Jones to have the opportunity and we need to make sure as a board of education that we're doing our due diligence, no matter what the program or course is. So I apologize. Um, and I would like to definitely get a follow-up on some of those things that are on your list. All right, thank you. And I would ask that uh, Chief Wydell in your investigative efforts to look into his concern that you, if, you're, if you have an update for us in curriculum, that would need to be an agenda item for that meeting. All right, any additional questions? Uh, Trustee Gavin. I wanna thank um, Trustee uh, Treasure Creighton and I wanna thank uh, Mr. Jones for bringing this issue up. My question is, were you taking the same class twice because you already had all of your courses done as a senior? Or was it just a mistake? <clears throat> mm. Um, I think it was just a mistake. Um, I still need some of the courses, but it's getting covered by like a CTE, CTE constructs or something like that. It's getting covered by that. So I guess they just put me in the same thing to just have a full schedule. I don't okay, good deal. Thank you for answering that. So I. I was thinking of CTE as well with the CTE director. Part of that process is having your transcript available and making sure that you have your transcript available and making sure that, you know, the student is very active um, in selecting the courses and making sure that those courses match your purpose and what it is that you actually want to do, which is why that role is super critical um, so that th this doesn't happen. Um, and of course, we all make mistakes. I'm glad that you brought it here. I'm never embarrassed of mistakes because it's an opportunity for us to fix it. Um, and in regards to Michigan Virtual, I um, was going to ask to add that to the curriculum committee agenda. Anyway, we do need to get on top of our virtual learning, who's passing, who's failing, and what type of um, strategies we have in place to make sure that those who are failing are no longer failing. Um, and then in regards to the bathrooms, <clears throat> that's a very serious issue. Bathroom is, this, is serious. And so I'm, I'm interested in possibly in the future, learning about the process. You know, if there is a problem in the building, do students have an opportunity to submit help, help desk tickets or get support as quickly as anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to go to Trustee Rockett Martin and then Secretary Triplett, and we're going to move forward. I have a question. I know in the past... I need you to speak into you, your mic, please. In the past, when you were choosing your classes, you met with your counselor, and you and your counselor would go over the classes that you needed to take uh, to make sure you were getting all of your requirements for graduation, you know, okay. yearly. So do you have a chance to meet with the counselor so that you don't have a to worry about duplicating classes because if their transcript is there, if your transcript is there and the counselor is with you, you can look and see what you've already had and select something different that could go in that place um, that is equal to what you need to take. So my question is, do you have a counselor that you can work with so that duplicating of classes doesn't have to happen? So yeah. you can choose your classes rather. Uh, yeah, we do. Um, I went to Mr. Uh, Alexander. He's our, our guidance counselor. And he just really told me to, he just put me in the same class as it was. It didn't really do nothing for me personally. Mm -hmm. Secretary Triplett. <clears throat> <clears throat> I haven't started talking yet, so you can start back up at two minutes. <laughs> I reclaim my time. <laughs> I reclaim my time. So I'm going to wait. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Secretary Triplett. Yes, As chairman of the curriculum committee, this is very disturbing. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, and I want to thank Dr. Buck as well for reformatting how the student representatives are able to present to us. 
and pass uh, their presentations were scripted. And they basically gave us the calendar of activities that was going on throughout the district. So I, I do want to, to say that we've had a course curriculum, we've had a course uh, calendar and catalog. That's not new. This administration is not just introducing this to us. So there is no reason for anyone not to know what the courses that are available to our students. We also decreased the number of credits, 18 credits to allow more of our students to be actively involved in dual enrollment. I did hear that seniors are being forced to take extra classes and they must have full schedules. So this is something we will be discussing in the curriculum committee. I also want to close with this and to our community. Please know that we are unraveling the inside dismantling of the school district. Let me make myself clear. Right now, at this present time, and we have new staff and we have people in position who inherited a history of dismantling from the inside out. And so please do not be alarmed or surprised at some of the things that you will hear, but know this, that they are being addressed, that there are people on this board who are aware of every move taken. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Triplett. All right, so we are, again, thank you for your, your insight um, and providing those updates to us. We truly value everything that you bring to the board and I appreciate your attendance. And um, you are a member of this board. You're able to stick it out as long as you can, but if you need to get home, that's perfectly fine as well, okay? All right, next on the agenda, we have a superintendent search, which is board reports. It's actually on this agenda, it's before committees. So the way that the current agenda is, it has superintendent search, it has CTE director, boiler replacement, and then committee reports are after. Oh, change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I need to get to the... the board report so I can read it. Okay, so I was not present at Saturday's meeting. It's my understanding that this is information that was tabled over or moved over from that meeting by the board. So this is staff report number B1, superintendent search, reason for board approval. The board has the power to search and hire staff for the district, including the superintendent. Facts and analysis of Benton Harbor Area Schools District is currently operating under the, su the supervision of an interim superintendent. It is the board's responsibility to hire the most qualified person for the position of superintendent. Policy reference 0132.1, selection of superintendent. Policy 1220, employment of the superintendent. Strategic plan reference, Benton Harbor Area Schools will recruit, hire develop and retain the best staff to improve student outcomes, recommend action, that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education votes to initiate a formal search for the role of superintendent. And this is approved to the president of the Board of Education by Deshaun Robinson, because it was requested at you all's meeting. So at this particular time, I'll ask if there is a motion to approve staff report B1. So moved. The motion has been made by Treasurer Creighton. Is there a second or support? Support. The motion has been made by Treasurer Creighton and supported by Trustee Gavin. Questions, comments, or concerns from the board? Trustee Gavin. Thank you, President Robinson. Um, you know, according to that policy, the board shall actively seek the best qualified and most capable candidate for the position of district superintendent. Um, and we have not yet done that. We have named um, a capable interim superintendent during, during this process, but we have not officially moved to actively 
seek um, candidates and open that up to um, our community, to the nation. We have thousands of graduates from um, alumni from our school district who have not had an opportunity to apply for the position. They know many people and there are other folks who, you know, may very well take an interest in our district. And we also owe it to our interim superintendent um, to post this position and allow him to apply for a permanent opportunity, just like uh, anybody else. So it's just the right thing to do. It is the school board's most important role um, to do. And the position has been uh, vacant since May of 2022. And so that is why I'm in support of us moving forward, doing the professional thing, um, no longer leaving this in the balance and just moving forward with posting the position, uh, which is our responsibility as the Board of Education. Thank you. Any additional comments from the board? Um, I do have a. You uh, have the floor, Treasurer Craig. Um, not a lot of discussion. I think um, Saturday there there seemed to be a lot of confusion about the process, and so um, I just want to see clarity um, because um, I support. Um, I think Ms. Gavin definitely um, explained it well. This is nothing against Dr. Butts. I do support Dr. Butts. Um, However, the analogy y'all gave is kind of like dating someone as their permanent girlfriend without an opportunity to ever get married. And so I just think um, it's definitely fair to him and to the district that we do our due diligence because that is our only employee. I know that we hear from a lot of people and we hire or approve the recommendations, um, but I do think that that's just something that we need to do. We need to do right by our, our interim superintendent and also our district. Um, this would be a way for him to get a fair opportunity and he won't have to, you know, just be in a dating stage um, his entire career here as superintendent. Then the other thing that I guess I'm seeking clarity on, um, I think a lot of discussion from the weekend um, at the retreat was about whether or not um, this actually means that we're posting it or this means that the board is approving that we start the process. And so we'll still have to come back before the board to determine um, what that process will look like. But this is just saying, okay, we realize that we need to get the process going and then we'll still need to make a decision uh, whether we're gonna do it internally, a search firm. So I just wanted to, if you could provide some clarity, um, us approving this tonight, what does it mean as it's written? Does it mean that we're going to, because I know when you read it, it just say that we're going to actually start um, a search. And so does that mean that we're just saying that, okay, we, we want to start a search? So because I wasn't present at the meeting that you all um, had Saturday, I assume that everyone at the board was clear on what it, or the, the individuals that were placed in the resolution or requested the resolution to be placed were clear on what exactly they wanted us to take the vote on. Okay, initially, um, Vice President Bowens um, requested for it to be a board vote. And then I think it was a few months ago initially, and then he asked again, and so we put it on there. And so we had discussion, but a lot of the discussion that we were having was about whether or not like what the search looks like. Do we need to do a community forum before or after? So I guess what I'm saying is the way that this is written, facts and analysis, um, is it just saying that we're going to start the process? And so this process, from my understanding, can be up to like six months. And so is this saying that we're just pulling the trigger on saying we're going to do a search? That's how I read it. Okay, because the other to initiate a formal search for the role of superintendent, it doesn't necessarily outline uh, what that search process would look like. It just mm -hmm. initiates that you would you would initiate a formal search, but that would that would require additional conversation as to whether that's going to be an internal search, a search firm use, things of that nature, which are all things that we've discussed previously. Okay, and then the other thing, um, I guess I wonder. So this is March. 14th and his contract expires um, in June, the current contract. And so um, how critical is it for us to move forward with this tonight? 
So the current contract as it stands does expire June 30th. However, there is flexibility in the contract that if the Board of Education determines that it needs him to proceed in the interim seat in the, uh, longer than that June 30th window, he would have the opportunity to extend the contract as we did before. So um, the board does need to proceed in the conversation, but the contract does have flexibility. And then one last final um, question. How, um, how, um, how important is it to, uh, okay, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Secretary Triplett. Uh, Madam President, first, I, first of all, I would like to say that and make it clear to the public that I never voted not to get the process of the superintendent search started. Um, I myself personally feel that, you know, we had, we discussed that we would have, we, with our strategic plan, which was done with a, with the entire with the community representatives from the community who helped us put together the strategic plan. It was scheduled for us to identify those same people who did the initial work on the strategic plan, also to give this new board and our new board members an opportunity to identify people to be a part of this process to find out once and for all, we can't just say we want the community to be involved and not allow the community to be involved. And so it was set for us to bring our community together to find out from them first and foremost, what is it that you all really, really want to see in a superintendent? Who sets the time, the, you know, when we, when we have to do it, when we're supposed to do it, I mean, this is our decision. And so for me, I think that would be a great opportunity for once to honestly respect the citizens of this community, to bring in parents, to bring in community partners, to have a discussion, to, to the people to say, this is what we want, because we've used the search committee, we've done that, and what if that's gotten up? From 15,000 students down to 1,500 searching of people coming in, it's a big business. We have to, sometimes you have to go slow in order to move fast. And so, and that beat does not mean a thing because everybody in here been talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need a few No, minutes. you all have been done an amazing job at respecting yeah. time, but please wrap up your comments. So I'm, as you all notice, I'm the only person that they tell to wrap up their comments. No, I did. I told Treasurer Creighton as well. Go ahead. Anyhow, but that's, that's my position. I don't think that we need to move quickly. Dr. Butts stepped in and began to do some great work. It's not broken. We don't have to have a new one right away. We have someone in there that has been doing some amazing work. It's not like we got somebody in there that's all over the place and what have you, so we don't feel comfortable enough to be able to for once Bring these people to the table. Some of you all are out here that need to be at that table so we can say what we want and then we can go forth. So the contract has flexibility to be extended if only for six months or for a year. But in the meantime, we need to do the work. We can't let another person come in here and rob us and take away and pillage off of the things that we are trying to put in place. As you see, we are finding out so many things that we did not know. And so you have to give us an opportunity as well to do that kind of work. It has nothing to do with doing the right thing or wrong thing. Everybody have their opinion. I'm not scared of nothing at this table, nothing out there and nothing here. So that scared, all that, that that's not a good work. But what I am is I am dedicated. And it's about time the people in this community, the real people, not the cliques, not the, 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 the whoever people say they're supposed to be, socialites or whatever it is. I'm talking about the real people. Secretary Baron Hall, Blitz. Island, Broadway. They need to be at the table. So that's why I said no. 
Thank you. Um, Trustee Gavin, I believe you've already made a comment, if I'm not mistaken. It, was there was yeah, there anyone? Nobody else has okay, been. Trustee Bowen. First off, I think we need to look at what we're voting on. It says selection for, for superintendent. That needs to be corrected. And when height needs to be corrected to hire when we're just voting on that. Um, the policy says when there is a vacancy in the superintendent's office, the board is required to implement a search. That's not a resolution, that's not a policy. However, due to the lack of the board at that time, we did not. We just went in and, you know, we placed an interim. The record will show that I was against that and I thought we needed to move it. However, at the current state we're in now, I do think this conversation needs to be talked over with the voters who pay taxes and actually live in the city and it needs to have a conversation. I also believe that this resolution is ceremonial because the policy states when it's a vacancy. We've already started the process of recruiting. And by the way, has anybody, like we were told, we were supposed to give our board secretary names. And I think only one board member gave names. So the lack of us proceeding on with the superintendent search also falls on us. But if we're voting on this, it to me is, in my interpretation, it's ceremonial because the board policy already implements that we are <clears throat> to be doing a search. So I'm not understanding the superintendent search. So I also did not vote no to start the superintendent search because we already started it. Madam President, I, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were calling on me. No, ma'am. I'm sorry. I was trying to process what Trustee Bowens was saying. My apologies. And I um, am really trying to stick to the one comment per board member per topic. I I do value what you have to say, Trustee Gavin, but I think it's it's critical for us to try to adhere to that so we can move through. I, I want to see if Trustee Doyle or Trustee Rockett Martin had anything to add to the conversation. Um, I, I saw was you also, scribbling. I didn't know if those were comments that you were preparing. I was also under the impression that we had started the superintendent search and that we were going to hold a town meeting we had scheduled so that the community could come in and give us their input on what they wanted in a superintendent. Um, and so with that being said, uh, the other thing is, I think Dr. Butts should be commended just for stepping in. He came in a time where he was, it was much needed that we have somebody in place. Um, you know, the state gives you so much time and you have to have the credentials. You just can't put anybody in that spot. You have to have the credentials to get in that spot. And Dr. Buzz has proven that he is capable of doing the work. He has um, innovative ideas. We now have a bus going, um, you know, and he's trying to get the information to the community to take it to you if you can't come to us. So, um, you know, I am still under the impression that we have started the search. And that is why I voted no. Okay, Trustee Doyle, did you have anything? It's no pressure. I just, sometimes I don't look both directions. I I personally feel like- um, Can you speak into the mic? I feel like this is something that we need to go ahead and get going um, just because this is our only employee. Nothing against Dr. Butts, just to get the process going. I'm not sure what was done to get the process going, but I think we need to go ahead and take care of this tonight. Thank you. So I'll make a comment. Um, as stated, I wasn't at the meeting Saturday. I will acknowledge that we did uh, previously indicate that we were going to try to hold our community forum for the 28th of February. Each person was supposed to review the link that was sent out by Liz to see if your people that you put on there before were who you wanted to maintain or if you wanted to make any additions. And so we needed to ensure that we had additional time or enough time to give those individuals 
an opportunity to clear their schedules to attend. It was also going to be a meeting that was open to the full public, regardless of the stakeholders selected. So the state, the the public could give us information as to whether they think we need a search or what they would like that process to look like. We did also previously discuss um, redoing the job description and things of that nature in that stakeholder meeting. So we've had a couple different discussions on what this looks like. It's my understanding that we did not have it on the 28th. That piece of it was not done, but also I realized that there were two events that were being held that day. One was a lead um, services event and the other was the state of the city. And so I shared with the board that I thought that it would not be wise to try to hold our open forum for that particular topic during the same window of time that two large events were being taken place um, because it would cause the community to have to make a decision as to what they, where, which event they wanted to attend and we want maximum participation. Somehow that was misconstrued um, that I made the suggestion to change the date because I wanted to attend one of the events. Um, and, and I just wanna clear the record that that was not the case. I was not even certain that I was planning to attend. Um, and so I think um, I'm in line with Secretary Triplett. I think it's very important that we as a board of education do hold the community forum and give them an opportunity to give us their insights on the superintendent process, the search, what they would like that to look like, whether they would like it to be internal or external, because we have not always allowed the community to have a part of the process, uh, a say so in what that process looks like. And so I just wanted to be able to have an opportunity to clarify any misinterpretations. I saw um, some recordings that uh, misconstrued why the meeting was canceled and, and I don't, I'm not a fan of fake news. So I wanted to clarify that if there was any confusion, but I think everybody at this particular time has gotten an opportunity um, to speak. I do think that we need to um, hold that form before we initiate any actual posting um, of the position, et cetera. So uh, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote? Madam President. Secretary Triplett went over two minutes and within that two minutes, he accused me of not being honest. I believe that we should ask Liz to read the motion that was read on Saturday and read how our trustees voted on that motion. I think it is important for the truth to be told at this table about what we voted on and how we voted. Okay, so I, and I apologize, I wasn't present. So you're trying to provide clarification to the motion that was made Saturday? Yes, ma'am. Are those, would you have those notes handy, Liz? Is that something that you have? Okay, Secretary Triplett. It, it doesn't matter because the, 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 the citizens are going to see tonight how I vote. But they don't need to get no minute. They're going to see tonight how I vote and why I voted the way that I voted. Madam President, so, so I think that we are starting to right. point of clarity. We're, we're drifting off a little bit. So we're at the, we're point at the, one second, Trustee uh, Gavin. We're at the position of taking vote on the report. Um, There's some confusion though, because some of the trustees are saying that we are already, we've already started the superintendent search. And you said that you wanted to have a meeting to ask the community if we should start the superintendent search. What the process should look like. So I, I do understand what you're saying. Some people have said that they believe the kind, and I can't speak for other people. They believe that we were already in the window of doing that by by implementing or placing a interim um, into his seat. And I believe that was Trustee Bowens and Trustee Raquette Martin that may have made those statements. I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. Madam President. Let's call for the vote. You have the floor. Um, I'm just, I'm, I don't, I don't have another comment. I was just going to request that we read the um, staff report because even in your final comment, it, it sounded like you said it differently than what's in the staff report. And so I do think that we're definitely all in different mindsets on what this staff report is saying 
because when clarity was asked about okay you know and and I think this process is confusing because normally when you have an interim you immediately start the search so I think that's and that was my initial question slash comment is like okay what does this staff report mean and you said it means that we're going to start the process and we will have to define what it looks like so I just wanted to be clear and so if you can reread that and if then if there's any clarity that you feel as president that we need so that we can make sure that we're making an informed decision that would be most appreciated at this time so what I would ask is that the person who made the request that the resolution be put on the agenda can clarify what it is exactly that they were requesting that we actually do in the initiation of the search. I'm not sure if that would be yourself or, or Trustee Gavin. I wasn't at it, that it meeting. Vice President Bowen. Correction. For public, oh, sorry. Madam, sorry. Madam President, to go back to my original clarification, your, your name is on this, this resolution. So I'm just asking if you can just clarify what this reads. So that's, my, that's name my, only is, request. my name is on the resolution because I am the president of the Board of Education. And I was informed that the board had made the decision to move this topic to Tuesday. And so upon the board making that decision to do that, the resolution was developed based on what you all discussed Saturday. And as the president of the Board of Education, my name has to go there, which is something okay. I think I indicated at the start of gotcha. the meeting okay so this was not a particular resolution that i was bringing before the board and i was not present at the meeting to be aware of what exactly you all discussed and wanted but as your president because it was in, i was informed that there was a request to place this on there my gotcha. name has to be there because the superintendent cannot bring a staff report requesting a search for a replacement of itself so my name is just there as a representative of the board but this was not my resolution madam gotcha. president and then, i'm sorry writing that we add this to the agenda so i don't mind reading it if you want sure, someone sure. to so it. i'm sorry we're going to we're going to pause because we are way beyond our 2 men 2 minute limit and um Ms. Gavin would like to provide some clarification on what she is requesting in the resolution so it is clear. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so the recommended action is that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education votes to initiate a formal search for the role of superintendent. That's it. Oh, that's what it says. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's what it says. Last comment, Secretary Triplett. Madam President, I am so glad that you clarified that we did vote, that we didn't vote. No, we voted to bring it to the Board of Education Tuesday so that the citizens of this community would be able to hear us um, tonight. So thank you for that clarification. Was that it, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So at this particular time, we are calling the vote on staff report number B1, which is the resolution to initiate the superintendent search. Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote? President Robinson? No. Vice President Bowen? No. Secretary Triplett? No. Treasurer Creighton? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? No. Trustee Gavin? Yes. No. Okay, so the motion failed. Next on the agenda, we have the CTE director position. And I will again begin by saying, now it, you know my nerves are shook because I've never missed a meeting before. I wasn't present Saturday, however, as a spokesperson, or the president of the Board of Education, because it is a resolution that was requested by a member of the Board of Education, it has my name on. Um, so I am going to, if I can find it in my things, I'm going to read it. And I do not, I'm not privy to the discussion and the comments. So I'm leaning on you all um, in the discussions that you had in that meeting as well. So this is staff report number B2, subject request for CTE director full-time position, date March 14, 2023, 
reason for board approval. The board would like to request that the CTE director position be a full-time position combined with the high school administrator assistant principal position. Facts and analysis, the Ben Harbor Erie School District had a CTE director at one time and the board would like it to be returned to its role in the district as a full-time position. Policy reference, policy 4111, creating a position. Strategic plan reference, Benton Harbor Area Schools will recruit, hire, develop, and retain the best staff to improve student outcomes. Recommended action that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education votes to create a full-time position for a CTE director combined with the high school administrator, which is the assistant principal position, approved for presentation to the Board of Education. Um, on March 14th, and this is staff report number B2. Is there a motion to approve staff report B2? Madam President, um, I make a motion that um, we approve staff report B2 and take a brief recess so that Liz can pull the minutes um, to see who actually made the original motion in the comments that were provided that put this on the agenda for today. Meeting is being recorded. The CTE director position? Mm-hmm, because okay. this motion was made to um, at a formal vote on Saturday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can, um, if there's no objections, I'm perfectly fine with us taking a brief recess. Liz, do you have minutes from? Notes. So was this a, so let me ask the board before we even attempt that. Was this a formal vote that was taken? Correct. So it was a vote to table it? No, um, someone made a vote. They um, So I made a motion to make this a full-time position. Um, some of the discussion was that, um, and, and if you recall from last month's meeting, I was gonna actually look in the meet, minutes. Um, I did request for us to, for someone to look into seeing when this position was dissolved because according to policy, in order to, um, in the position, it would take a board vote. And so um, I wasn't able to get a follow-up. I have not gotten a follow-up over the last month regarding that. And so again, we're not looking to create a new position. Um, I think a lot of the discussion and again, confusion is around, I don't know who's keeping these records, but again, this is something that was brought to our attention. We didn't know that we didn't have a full-time CTE or a CTE director. And at this time, we don't have anyone right now. And so not understanding why the position is not posted. If you look on the website, um, positions remain vacant. The speech therapist position has been on there for years vacant. And so I don't know how some of these things just disappear. And so again, um, the board had a two assistant principal positions. And again, we learned um, that it's only one and the board didn't take a vote to collapse it, but that position is not currently posted. So it just seems to be a lot of, like Mr. Triplett said, a lot of this dismantling, or um, I don't know if we have magicians that work for us, <laughs> but it, these things, I just don't know, like how are these things disappearing? These, this shouldn't be on the agenda, not because it's not needed, but because we've already, the board, this is already, I can't find anywhere in the archives that this position was eliminated. And so I'm not understanding. I'm so confused. I'm so outraged by like what has happened to our district that all of these things are just disappearing. But, you know, nevertheless, I so, so that's kind of where I am. Um, again, you know, this, I like the way that this staff report reads, but it's kind of confusing because we're technically not creating a position because the CTE director position exists and the system principal position exists. And so we're just asking really that our policy be enforced. But if we have to do it, someone referred to it as, a, I guess, a motion or just formality. But no, we what we're asking that we do right now is to follow our own policies. And, and I guess that's what my motion is for, that we follow our policies. We should have a CTE director. We should have an assistant principal position at the high school. So if we don't have it, then this is our opportunity to create it so that we can make sure and ensure that it's being enforced. Okay, so so given the circumstance, what I hear you saying is that you want, based on the board approval piece at the top, you want to combine the stipend position of the CTE director with the current assistant principal position that was never filled. 
if it makes the board more comfortable, the policy 4111 um, creating a position doesn't necessarily have to be listed as a policy reference. And I'm not sure if you're wanting to place a motion for um, approval of this board report, because what I don't want us to do is begin conversations before we even get a motion on the floor, because at that particular what will happen then is that a new series of conversation will start. And I know you all had quite a bit of conversation on Saturday. Okay, so at this time, I would like to request that um, we make a motion to um, and see, okay, so to create or request that we have a CTE director at the high school for our district. That, that's, what, that's what my motion is. I want to... Uh, make a motion that we ensure that there is a CTE director at the high school. So as the superintendent that we have um, on record right now, Dr. Butts can work with his staff to determine what that looks like. But right now we need a full-time CTE director or someone that's full-time at the high school to have those responsibilities. Um, so let me restate the motion. So you want you essentially are wanting to update the resolution to remove so that it just says reason for board approval. The board would like to request that the CTE director position be a full time position. And it can be assigned to another administrator if the FTEs, if, if HR learns that, you know, there's not enough programming. You know, those are the kind of things that we don't do at the board table. What we do is make sure that our policies are being followed. And at this time. We've learned that we don't have one, so our policies are not being followed. So I want to make a resolution to ensure that our policy is being followed. Madam President. One second, uh, Dr. Buss, please excuse me. So you're not making a motion for approval of B2, or are you making a separate motion about policy? I would like to make a motion for B2, and okay. I would like the admin via Dr. Buss to determine what that might look like. Okay, so, so the current resolution as it stands, in order to adjust it to what Treasurer Creighton is suggesting, reason for board approval would be the board would like to request that the CTE director position be a full-time position. We would be removing the combined with the high school administrator assistant principal position. Um, no, I'm not asking to remove that. I'm saying however they, they, um, however they assign it, you know, it can be assigned because it's already a current assistant principal position, right? It's a current assistant principal position. So I guess for funding purposes, I don't understand why there's not funding and why an assistant principal at the high school can't be over CTE. Okay, so what we will do is remove the resolution as it reads. Treasurer Creighton is, is making a motion for the creation of a full-time CTE director with administrating administration determining what that will look like. Did I hear you correctly? Or just proceed with making your motion and then I'll call for a second. Yeah, I'm good with that. I guess I'm, I'm saying yes, so yes. Is there a second or support? I, I really don't. Trustee, trustee Gavin. Good. Because the recommended action is that the Ben Harbury Schools Board of Education votes to create a full-time position for a CTE director combined with the high school administrator position. Is that not, like, I don't know what is different in this motion than what's on this paper. That is what I'm trying to understand as well. <laughs> you're right i'm sorry it's okay yeah, I'm, i just don't it, i, I want to because we're taking a formal vote i uh -huh. want to make sure that everyone understands what the vote is and so i'm sorry if it's me with the back and forth no, I, if the motion is fine if, if the resolution is fine you guys are saying it's fine as it reads it's fine i think my my my, my struggle is that we're creating a position that exists so that's that's been my struggle that's it but the, the language is fine. It's the part that says we're creating a position, but the position should already exist. So that's just kind of what I'm, I can't marry, but let's move forward. Okay. So is, so are you making a motion to approve B2? Yes, ma'am. Is there a second or support? 
Support. The motion has been made by Treasurer Creighton and supported by Trustee Gavin. We're going to get on through this thing. Dr. Buss, I did not forgive you, uh, forget you. You wanted to make a comment to Staff Report B2. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted for, for clarity, both positions already exist. Um, the CTE director position, I'm presuming went down to a stipend position due to the drop in FTEs, uh, the, the drop in student counts. The position that I know of was never dissolved from, from, from what I know of. So creating, an, if, if you're going to create a new position, you re, you're creating what's already in existence. You can, um, so with the, with the resolution as it reads, um, combining it with a high school position doesn't necessarily make it a new position. It just combines the two. Uh, it just adds an additional duty to an, it, it, it marries two administrative positions. So both of those positions already exist. You can marry the two. Dr. Butts, I mean, Madam President, I'm sorry. You have the floor. Dr. Buss, thank you for that. Cause that's kind of without that's that was my struggle. So I appreciate that you're in support of this and that this is something that sounds like you've already had deep thought about. Thank you. So should in, in my efforts to make the resolution say what you all wanted to say, should it say votes to combine a full time the full time? Well, our Secretary Triplett, go ahead. Because I don't this, want to further confuse things. Yeah, and this is why we needed to bring it here. Um, in the curriculum committee, um, this was discussed about a CTE director. And so this was already presented in the curriculum. You can't have a CTE program without a CTE director, period. It can't happen. That was discussed. So how we move, how we do it, the, the in, in curriculum committee, it was brought the question was discussed that was going to be brought here tonight was this. At this particular time, the human resource department, like, like Tre Treasurer Creighton has said, the human resource department, there are a lot of things that have disappeared. There's a lot of things that you cannot get information to do your work and your due diligence. As the principal at Ben Harbor High School for the 2015-16 school year, I had a full-time CTE director. Once again, the dismantling from the inside out, people use excuses of when we had the chief, when the board was, was uh, rendered powerless, all of these things happen. It's like you have an emergency manager or what have you, all these things happen. And so no one seems to know where these things are. Since I've been on this board of education, like you said, the CTE director is a position. There was an assistant principal position, a second assistant principal at this high school last year. We have a whole lot of things and a lot of, of, of things that Dr. Butts is unraveling to find out where these things are. I, it has never, ever been in my mind that we should not have a CTE director if we're gonna have CTE programs, but in the curriculum meeting at this particular juncture, we needed to continue in the manner that we were going with the stipend in order for us to get the necessary paperwork and documentation taken care of that we need for right now. That was the only thing that was never to replace a CTE director. We have to have someone in that position right now for them to be able to sign the papers necessary for the CTE classes that we presently have. So this was coming up in the curriculum report. So um, I'm, 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 again, I'm confused. It's like everybody confused. And I think it would be irresponsible for us to vote on something when everybody is bedazzled. Thank you. Trustee Bowen. Thank you. So earlier, I asked that this be removed off the agenda. And this is why it needed to go through committee and we needed to discuss this. In our committee, I did ask when did this position, as the chairman of HR, I did ask when was this position eliminated to part-time? We were told it was done when Bob Herrera was the interim superintendent, whatever you want to call him. 
I then asked, we didn't ask, how could we make it full time? We were told that we were not able to make it full time. So I'm not against a CTE program. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And eventually you go. In the world? In the phone. Oh, <laughs> But it was in the world, so. Thought I needed to call a, rest, a recess to vacate. Um, eventually, you go bankrupt. And nothing against the CTE position. We even approved today hiring a CTE on the agenda. It's approved. But what I wanted us to do is, like one of the trustees said, we got to follow our processes. And our process is making sure this goes through committee. And it did not go through committee for us to go back and tell them what well, the board is saying they want this full time it's not that i'm against it but as you can see everyone is having some confusion about it that's why i wanted it removed off the agenda um i'm not against it you know we had one of the best i remember back in the day but the process is if we don't have the funds and they're telling us one thing we can't force them because then it becomes something like we're micromanaging that's it um, so i would like to add a comment i know the curriculum did discuss it and and each member of the curriculum committee has expressed that we are interested in there being a full-time CTE director. So I want to make sure that that is, is clear. It's something that the board supports, but we are at a juncture where the district is making effort to find exactly where the funding source is going to come from as well. And so we did attempt um, to get some support from a particular area. We were not successful. So Chief Whitehill and Dr. Buss are still making efforts to find the funding source for a CTE director. And um, that's the last update that curriculum received. And I'm sorry to, to steal your shine on that, Secretary Triplett. But um, so I just want to make sure that it's clear that this is something that I support. I just would, would prefer that we allow administration an opportunity to find the funding source um, for us to develop the position before we actually um, take a vote that sort of kind of enforces something that we're saying we already have. So um, Treasurer, uh, I'm sorry, Trustee Gavin, I'll go ahead and allow you to, I'm sorry, did Raquette Martin, were you trying to make a comment? Go ahead. So am I understanding though, what? Uh, this position is all, these positions already exist, right? They haven't shown us no. The, so that's for Dr. Butts. I, I'm not sure if he can answer my understanding that we have a CTE director, which is a stipend position. And Trustee Bowens uh, pointed out that later in the agenda, there's an approval for a CTE director that's a stipend. What this is requesting is that instead of it be a stipend for a person, that we turn it into an administrator position. And I mean, I'm sorry, full time and combine it with an administrator role. Um, Madam President. I think Trustee Gavin was next. I, I was just going to, if you can, Absolutely. Dr. Bus kind of provided clarity, I thought, about that already. Like it's something that he supports. So I'm, Dr. I'm, Bus. I'm getting confused again. And, I, and, and, and before you speak, I think for me as well, if we have a, a minute, if we have a person that's on the agenda that's already a full-time staff, that is being given a stipend to do the work for the position, then it's kind of almost as if we have what this is reading as. But I know that yeah. in our previous committee meetings, Trustee Gavin, your concern was that you wanted it to be a designated position of its own, is what I thought. And in the so the language of it being an assistant principal, I think is something that's new for me that maybe came from Saturday. So I'll allow you to respond to that trustee gavin and then okay go ahead interested in what he thinks go ahead what i what i was saying earlier is that with that position if you when you're saying full-time and, and a full-time assistant principal position that's two positions what i was saying earlier you can marry the two so if you had if what happened with the the full-time um, assistant principal position did not go away the funds were reallocated for a second um, instructional facilitator at the high school. That discussion came back um, August, if I'm not mistaken, the board had some concerns of being uh, too many top heavy at the uh, central office level. So we reallocated and we hired two, uh, we had a second instructional facilitator. We can go back to the assistant principal position because it's not gone 
from the high school and add the duties of CTE along with that position so we can marry the two is what I was trying to explain so that you can have that person performing assistant principal duties as well as CTE di director duties. Um, Trustee Gavin. I wanna thank Dr. Buss for clarifying. This is very simple to me. I don't understand why anybody <clears throat> is confused. We had a CTE director. It was a full-time position. It is a very important role if we're talking about rebuilding our school district and to continue to put it off or to offer someone who is not housed at the high school to have a supervisory position in the high school, but at a different school and giving that person a a very small amount of money to do a very big job. That is, that's what dismantling a district looks like. I think it's important for us to move efficiently as a board. We don't have to talk about things for three hours and three months. It has gone through the curriculum committee. No, it has gone through the HR chair said that he talked about it and asked questions. And so now it's time to go ahead and move forward. I don't understand why we, you know, this is, it sounds like the super interim superintendent is in favor of it. Maybe the word that we're having an issue with is the word create. Maybe it's votes to fill a full-time position for a CTE director combined with the high school assistant principal position at the high school, which is what that position always is supposed to be anyway, to properly service our students. Everybody has an opportunity to have offline conversations to get clarity. But when we come to the board table, I just think it's important for us to go ahead and move forward, take the vote and do what we need to do for our staff and our students. Okay, so I am going to call the board's attention to the fact that it's 705. We have not even gotten through board business. So this is the last comment. We're going to move expeditiously and no more grace will be granted. Secretary Triplett. Madam President, this is in curriculum. It's in our committee. The curriculum committee has requested that at this particular time, there is some very important time sensitive document that has to be signed with the CTE, whatever, the, the $5,000 stipend, that is not a director. That is the person that is overseeing the CTE, the initiatives for CTE. The curriculum, the chief academic officer is working with Baron Ritza, the director of the county CTE program to find out what happened to our program. How do we get these programs back into full service and to be functioned, which our all of our CTE programs are in other places all over this county. The ones that we had here, they're in other schools. So my, at this particular time, we do not have a second assistant principal at that high school. I did not know that the, that the assistant principals were being funded through title funds. I thought they were coming out of general funds. So I'll talk about, I'll find that out later. So the, the second IF and what have you is through title and grants and what have you but I did not know that the assistant principal was coming from those funds. I thought they were from the general fund. However, that's, this is why I am saying for me that I feel that there is still work to be done. It's a, a, and we, we, we've talked about it. We're going to move on it. You can't, you, you, you have to have, if you're gonna hire a CTE director, which is in that second position for a principal that's not there, you got to have, you can't just be a CTE director without CTE credential. You know, so, I mean, what would you, you just, you can't just give this to the district has someone right now that's handling in an interim basis who have CTE credential. Thank you, Secretary Triplett. Um, please call the vote for, for board report B2. President Robinson. No. Vice President. Bowens. No. Secretary Triplett, no. Treasurer Creighton? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? No. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Motion failed. 
Okay, so next we're gonna go to boiler replacement. Again, um, we're gonna try to get through this conversation a lot quicker. This is stemming from the Saturday meeting. Um, subject, boiler replacements dated for today. Reason for board approval, the board would like to replace all the boilers and the plumbing at the high school and other schools in the district is needed. The cost of this would exceed the current threshold of 28,048 as mandated by the state of Michigan Department of Education threshold, policy reference 6320, facts and analysis, the district boilers need replacement after several years of neglect and their life expectancy has expired. Strategic plan reference to Ben Harbor Area Schools will develop, implement, and evaluate a fiscally responsible plan that will ensure physical and psychological safety. Recommended action that the Ben Harbor Area Schools Board of Education votes to approve the replacement of the high school boilers and others in the district as needed. Um, is there a motion to approve staff report B3? Support. The motion has been made by Trustee Bonds. Is there a support? Support. The motion was made by Trustee Bowens and supported by Trustee Gavin. Questions, comments, or concerns? Trustee Bowen. Can we ask Dr. Butts, do we have a cost estimate of how much the broilers would cost? Um, and do we have money in the funds to replace the high school broilers right now? Dr. Butts? The last estimate we had was back um, in 2018 that Mr. Weber had provided. We do not have any um, updated estimates. We would have to RFP, the a process, we would have to RFP it out in order to get those, those costs and estimates. I can report, um, I was gonna do it later on, but the, in the sinking funds that have not been reconciled as of yet, it's $7.8 million, but they have not been reconciled, which means the Uh, projects that we started this summer, which were, and, and some during the school year, which were some lighting improvements to the pack, uh, sound equipment at the high school and at deck, the roof replacement, the, the current boiler repairs, not replacement, repairs, the pipes that burst during the Christmas break, the trees and upkeep that were done during the summer have not been reconciled to show a true balance of what is left in the sinking funds as of, as of date. Madam President. Okay, Trustee Bonds. If Madam you President, the treasurer, um, I'm I'm just trying to understand why the treasurer was not referred to, but go ahead. So you're telling me, can I finish or? Go ahead. I, and, oh my God, sorry. So as of right now, we don't have an updated cost of how much the broilers would cost or anything of that nature, correct? Because I think the last time we were told about 13 million The last estimate that I looked at was between um, five million. It was a, it was an estimated cost of five million. Okay, so it was not thirteen million. It was five million, and we don't know with our bank accounts. And this has not been something that you guys have brought to the facilities committee, correct? That's correct. Thank you. All right, Treasurer Creighton, did you have any additional comments? I, I do. I have a comment as the treasurer. I'm most disgusted. Um, First off, by the lack of leadership, um, again, we have one employee and um, it is that employee's responsibility. And this didn't just start um, a year ago, but it is that employee's responsibility to manage the entire district. It is a huge job. However, it's a job that one signs on when they get that big contract. And so I'm most offended because, again, we don't enforce policy. Um, I've heard about several things that have come out of the sinking funds, and this is my first time hearing of it. So I am very disgusted and offended as a taxpayer, as a parent, and as a community member, and as well as an elected official that we have set here and allowed someone to give us a list of things that's been paid for that no one at this board table has voted on. So that's offensive. Um, also, um, things haven't been reconciled well, how are we operating? How are, how have we approved different things if things aren't being reconciled? So yes, I know that the, the and this is going to be in my finance report. However, um, it seems like this agenda, the creation of this agenda is kind of all over the place and, and it's going to elongate our meeting for sure. 
But um, as I hear people using things as facts and, and evidence as to why we can't do something, again, I can go and say I'm going to build a house before I can secure my funding. Once I determine I'm going to build a house, then I go get the funding. So as we make policies at this board table, it is not saying that you have to do it tomorrow. And again, you don't need an RFP to get a quote. You don't need an RFP to get a quote. You can call, and we talked about this. You can call three companies and just find out, okay, I want to buy a mink coat. I call three companies and, and figure out how, how much they cost. And so it just seems to be a lot of work that needs to be done. And I'm not sure if we have people in place that's doing the work or if we're just here once a month arguing, going back and forth, and then nothing is being done. So who is enforcing the policies if we're not doing it? Who is approving all of these purchases if we're not doing it? Like, how are these things being purchased if we have not approved them? Thank that's, you. that's not good. Thank you, Treasurer Creighton. Secretary Triplin. What, what, what's disturbing to me, Madam President, and, and the reason that we're sitting here right now, in my personal and professional opinion, when we went into our retreat Saturday, here we go on to argue, then talk about board right, business. Okay, so we want to talk. We are going to remember talking. our board norms. We're doing very good as it relates to time. Um, as far as our comments, I know we got off track with some of the topics, which I wanted to respect what everyone had to say, but I'm really trying to keep you guys to two minutes per topic. So go ahead, Secretary Triplett. Okay, I have not talked while anybody said anything, and I would like the same courtesy, and I want to reclaim my time. <laughs> as I stated, the retreat, all of these items that we're sitting here discussing right now were on that agenda to bring to for the superintendent, for us to have questions from the superintendent and have the superintendent to have the discussion with us as to where this district was in all of these areas. And he was to go back to his chiefs if he did not have this information and bring this information to us. So now we're here right now, the whole purpose was for us to get clarification. And now we're sitting here playing games with words and what have you, when the superintendent was not given the opportunity and everybody sitting at this table, whether they were on the board or not know what we are dealing with. They know exactly what we've been dealing with in all areas of central administration. So let us not play these games because I, what I said Saturday, I will no longer dummy myself down and I'm not playing games. We know what's happening. We know, we know in finance, we know in curriculum, we know in human resources that we have some serious problems. And they were not just developed within the last six months. So we can sit out here, perpetrate, play these games before the public. But it's some serious work that has to be done. And this is not the time nor the place to do so. And it ain't no joke to me. Anything that I got to say, I'm going to say it to you. I've been in this thing a long time. I've never wavered with none of it. I ain't quit nothing. So I've been here, and I'm serious about this thing. So to the citizens of this community, we got a lot of work to do and we're working. Okay, so I'm not sure if there's anyone else that okay. needed to make a comment that hasn't. If Oh, Ms. Gavin, Trustee I'm Gavin. Take a break. I'm going to take a break. I, I, We're going to allow Trustee Gavin to, to make her comment. Uh, we can then take the vote. I need a break. And then we can take a recess. Thank you. Madam Chair. You have the floor. Thank you. <clears throat> this is Great. very simple. You can listen to people talk, but how they vote tells you everything that you need to know. And we are in an, we have an opportunity to vote and get things done pretty quickly. It doesn't take long to find money that's in an account. You just go look at the account 
and see how much money is there. And then you do simple math or you contact your accountants to help you with that. It's very simple. There was a presentation done for this board outside of me and um, Trustee Doyle two years ago because the boilers, there were stickers on the boilers because it was that dangerous. And at that time was an opportunity to look into replacing those boilers. And I don't understand how adults are okay with kids and staff sitting in these uncomfortable buildings in which one room is hot, another room is cold, and then we're expecting them to perform like all these other schools under different circumstances. The circumstances, and then we wonder why they, why they, have, mood, why they have mood issues and why they're not performing the way that we want them to perform. We're not giving them the environment that they deserve. And we can do that very easily by voting yes, very easily. I don't know who people are talking to that's making them not want to move forward on the things that are in the best interest of our children. But there's another agenda going on. This Board of Education has the power to vote yes to move forward on this. And then the superintendent can find the dollars in addition to the seven point plus million dollars that we already have. Okay, thank you. I, I do not believe there's anyone else that would like to, to make a comment. Um, and I will I, I don't need to say anything that has not already been said. So Secretary Triplett, for the sake of time and allow us to take a recess, please call the vote. President Robinson. No. Vice President Bowen. No. Secretary Triplett. No. Treasurer Creighton. Yes. Yeah. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? No. Trustee Gavin? Yes. All right, so we are going to take a brief recess. It is 7.20. We are gonna come back at 7.30. I'm going to ask um, that the Chiefs and Dr. Butts take a look at the agenda to see if there is anything that is on the agenda that we may be able to uh, move to April so we can try to get out in a timely manner tonight. If not, we'll keep it moving. We're at a recess. I would ask that everyone not move and talk until I actually go to recess because the, the tape is still going. All right, we are effectively taking a recess at 7.20 p.m. Thank you. Since effective 7.33 p.m. Meeting is being recorded. I know that this is not on the agenda. However, if the board would entertain and, and give me an opportunity, I would like to read the Board of Education norms again. No, the Board of Education norms for Benton Harbor Area Schools. Oh, make a note that uh, Doyle is not at the table. No, no. Oh, that Creighton has, uh, she's out of the meeting. Um, she did not return from recess. So I just want to make sure that is noted in the minutes. Thank you, Vice President Bowens. So the Board of Education norms for Benton Harbor Area Schools, we will treat each other with respect. We will listen to learn. We will refrain from side conversations. We will use our time wisely, starting and ending our meetings on time. We will challenge ideas, not people. We will ask questions when in doubt. There will be no surprises at the board table. We will practice the seven norms of collaboration, which are pausing, paraphrasing, posing questions, putting ideas on the table, providing data, paying attention to self and others and presuming positive intent. Where we are is the committee reports. And so I know a lot of this conversation we've essentially had so far in some of the discussions that we've had. I know that you all had quite an extensive meeting this past Saturday. So I'm going to give the floor to our committees as listed. Uh, Treasurer Creighton is not present. However, is there a member of the finance committee that would like to go over the report? If not, it has been um, provided to the board. So we can just allow the board to review those notes and move past the finance committee report. Or if there's a member of finance that would like to speak to give the report, you're more than welcome to do so. I'll defer to the finance committee. You can go ahead. We have. Okay, so the finance committee ha has provided their written report. So I'll ask that the board review that. If you have any questions for the finance committee regarding the report that has been provided, 
please email those directly to our treasurer, which is Treasurer Creighton. Next, we have the committee report from Human Resources, which is Vice President Bowens serving as chair. Vice President Bowens, you have the floor. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, we discussed several things this week. Um, this past month, we had three meetings. We discussed the DEI trustee Creighton, from my understanding, wanted a DEI um, diversity, equity, and inclusion position for the district. At this moment, we were advised that the district does not have the capabilities or finances for that. Um, they also asked for an audit of our personnel committee, and we also um, asked, and the committee has been stating for a while they wanted them to be audited. You know, if there's anything wrongdoing, they're open to that to be um, fixed. We discussed the CTE director. Again, that was voted on earlier, but we discussed that we do not have the finances currently for it to be a full-time position. And we're trying to build that position back up. The problem is, so say this year we give somebody that position, we create it, fund it. Next year, we're back at layoffs and cuts because we don't have the money. So if we're gonna fund a position, we wanna make it at least be five years or more to make sure we're able to attract and obtain highly qualified staff. Um, we discussed mutual, no, we're switching over to a system. I'm sorry, Marvin, we're switching over to a system and the staff will be requiring training. We discussed some recruiting efforts and our March deadline. If we are going to be issuing non-renewals or everything of that nature and how complaints are handled. Is there any questions for the finance? Sorry. For human resources. For human resources, sorry. Any questions from the board? Uh, Trustee Gavin. Chair Bowens, um, you indicated that there is no money for a CTE director. Did you look at all of the finances or did you just go based on um, the number of CTE programs that are at the building? I'm, I'm sorry, can I hear so when, when the short report, you have the floor to serve as chair. I'm glad you asked me that question. As me being the chair of HR, my job is to make sure we have the positions posted and to make sure also, and to make sure we are doing that. I think your question would be better answered to Trustee Creighton as she's the board treasurer and she's currently not here for that. So that's something that we can defer to finance as it relates to, because I know it was something that came through curriculum. I know it came through your human resources. And so I'm not a member of the finance committee. I'm not really sure if the money and the budgeting has been reviewed um, fully to, to look at ways in the funding to switch a change or rearrange it or whether or not, I think if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Buss has said, it could be sustainable for maybe a one year period, but it doesn't, we don't have funding beyond that. But but we will direct that question to finance to dig more into that. Um, you can continue. Trust also, I'm sorry, I did forget, you know, we asked the question when this position was brought down to part time or in a stipend. So what I did as chair of HR for now on any position where if it's a change or anything that comes through me, they cannot just go to the board or not the board, the superintendent when they're cutting those hours. I implemented that they need to inform me and I will be or the chair of HR, whoever takes this position afterwards, and they would be responsible for informing the board of changes of that nature. So we won't be in this position that we're in now. So it'll be coming through Human Resources Committee? Yes, the Human Resource Chair would be responsible for emailing the board and letting the PUP board know of changes of that nature. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions for the Chair of Human Resources at this time? I, um, I do have a question. As I look through um, terminations, resignations, and uh, decisions, how those decisions are made, do you all have any discussion in detail about who's being brought before us? And uh, for the longest, we have not been able to uh, uh, get exit review, um, exit interview result um, from people. So what are you all doing in that uh, regard? Great question, Trustee Triplett. As you being on the board with me, we have received board exit reviews. However, let me advise you, 
we don't get access to every exit review. They have to select that box. Um, we did mention, look at that and we discussed that um, and we explained, we understand the situations. And I will tell you our resignation from this year to last year is much lower. And we discussed some of those things. How do we recruit? And what are some of our hindrances and issues that we are having and how do we improve that? And if you would like that conversation, I would be more than privy to give you that. You know, I, I think that those um, those numbers are lower because everybody from Benton Harbor has been let go. So mm -hmm. I'm quite sure that that might be one of the reasons why your numbers are so much lower. You know, trustee trip. No, no, thank you. Sir. Thank you. So we will continue that conversation in the HR department. I know previously I requested in a in an actual meeting that we have all of the exit interviews that the board was allowed to see um, from a particular period of time. It may have been like July of uh, 2021 through present. I, I don't remember what that meeting was, so I could be misspeaking on the time frame, but that was sent out to us previously. But we will ensure that the exit surveys, and we've discussed it before, the exit surveys that are selected to be shared with the board come through the HR committee and then also are sent out to the board for review so we can have that information. Um, thank you, Trustee Bowens, for your comments in your report. Secretary Triplett. Well, I mean, in all sincerity, you know, we as board members have the right to any information that we request that is going to help us be able to do our jobs effectively. And so as a member of the HR uh, committee last year, we were things that were being reported and then the way in which they were being reported were like it was a resignation and in actuality, it was not a resignation. Uh, we were sent exit interview results only when they were people who were upset with a decision that the board had made to terminate them. So I've only seen two in my history here on the Board of Education. And so this is something that I would like the chairman and the HR committee seriously take into consideration because when you have the amount of resignation and, 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 and termination, those are red flags. <laughs> And they, they are very, 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 very serious. I said it in a sarcastic way, but I meant what I said as it relates to when I look at the history of people that are terminated immediately, the majority of them are from this community. Thank you, uh, Secretary Triplett. Just one second. You still have the floor. Thank you. And Trustee Triplett, I understand your sentiments and you know, I'm one of the ones that vote no on resignations and everything. As just becoming chair, full disclosure, two months in the game, we will investigate um, and be a voice for the people. We will listen to what we're heard, not what we're told. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for providing, uh, Vice President Bradley for providing, I'm Please, sorry, Mr. Vice President Please. Bowen's habits right. for providing the human resources Please. update as chair. Next, we're gonna to move to curriculum and sped. And I would ask that trustee Bowens not file a complaint on me <laughs> using the wrong name. Secretary Triplett. I've just lost my curriculum report. <laughs> Got me nervous to move, filing complaints for agenda approvals. Right, I'm, gonna, right. I'm gonna be careful. Point of order. The, um... I had this report pulled up now. It's saying that I have to request access so what we can do is we can move forward to facilities and come back to you secretary triplet to give you time to pull it up um so we're going to go with the facilities committee update and i do not believe you all have selected a chair just yet so do either of you would either of you prefer to give that update i would give that update uh madam president um the facilities committee um along with uh, Chief Corson and facility, our facilities manager, we've been vetting, we are doing a master uh, facilities plan. And so we have reached out to companies to present to us as a committee to uh, 
show us what they bring to the table in assisting us to in the development of a master facility plan. And so um, we did have two companies to come in. It, I think it's SiteLogic. And also uh, we had Whiteman. And so we um, have not identified which one we want to bring to the Board of Education and to the, the, uh, to the community. But there is a lot of work and I think it needs to be on the record that there is none of us who, who are voting to say that these boilers or that these things need to be fixed in our buildings. Not one of us. This has been my first two years on the Board of Education. All they talked about was boiler. We do have problems with our boilers. We do have boilers that are extremely old. Um, but our facilities director has some knowledge and has been on top of it with those vendors who have been working with us down through the years. The company that we chose last uh, a couple of years ago, these people have been working on this boiler in particular at the high school. When we talk about the facilities master plan, the facilities master plan, and once we identify who is going to help us lead this work, it is important. Uh, a white man, um, when they came through and presented to us, it was it was it was something that was very 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 impressive to me. If I have to speak, um, not saying that we would pick one over the other, because a master plan, a master facility plan, requires a lot of detail. And so throughout the conversation, one of the one of the companies said that they had done some work with Detroit Public School. And so when Detroit called them in, they had four buildings that they were supposed to look at. After they start having a discussion because they had jumped the gun with getting ready to make some decisions, they made a decision to say, listen, we're going to have you two go through and do an assessment over all of these buildings to identify what buildings that you will that you might be able to use once you because with our numbers being low, the master plan may call for us to do some closing of, of, of buildings. It may call for us to do some tearing down of buildings. We need to find out which one of our buildings has the least amount of work to do in them when we get ready to make our master facilities plan. This includes going in and checking boilers, the facilities, the structures, all of this. And so that's why we were not we had not been able to present this to the Board of Education and to the community. The master facility plan, the work which was given to the superintendent and to the chief of facilities and director of, of facilities, that work is being done. And so I just want to report out to the Board of Education, we are deciding which one we want to present to you all. So they're going to come before the community. And we are also deciding if this is something that we want to do as a total community. South Bend Public Schools right now is in the second phase of their master facility plan. Benton Harbor is not the only district, not only in the state, but in this region who have buildings who are extremely old, who have boiler situation. And so a master facility plan is done in phases. And so we are on top of it. Our facilities director is on top of what's going on with our, our boilers and the state of our boilers at this particular juncture. There is no way in the world that I think any of us would intentionally have people in these buildings and we're not having people on top of what it is that needs to be done. So that has been at the forefront. Can they come in? Yes, the buildings are part of the buildings are cold, part of the buildings are hot. This is not new. We have been going through this for some time, but we do have people that are working and making sure, in particular here at the high school, they have worked extremely hard. Now, unbeknownst to you and to us, 
There's an emergency situation that's going on that we are working on right now to make sure that our boilers are in condition for us to be able to sustain and maintain school. If ever we find out that we have something that is in that condition, we will have to make the necessary adjustments to move students. We are not at that point yet, but we are working on our facilities and we do have a master plan. We have begun the work on a master facility plan for Benton Harbor Area School. I want to let you all know that. We will bring that to you. Yes. Um, Chair Triplet, has the facilities committee um, established a timeline of how long it would take to um, replace the boilers in each building? I ask because summer school is around the corner. And if there was a time to do it, that would be a great time. I'm just wondering, have they looked into how long it would take to do it? Well, one thing that would have to, to happen, uh, uh, Trustee Gavin, is simply this. If they, when they come in and they look at it and say, which one of our buildings, um, our, say for instance, our boiler is in worse condition. But that, what we will do, we will not house summer school in that particular building. That building has to be cleared completely to give them, if it's two months, if it's three months, if it's a month, to make sure because it's not just taking there are a lot of steps to replacing an, an old boiler system. And so, like I said, there's a lot of things we have not, they have not said, they can't give us a timeline because they haven't seen them. So have like- they it, requested, I guess I'm asking, did they request the timeline? Well, at this particular juncture, they were just presenting to us. They, and we were, we, were, we were looking at the two companies to bring before you all, to bring before our Board of Education and then bring it to the community. Once we identify as a facility we, committee, we're gonna recommend to the Board of Education, send the PowerPoint presentation to you all to let you all look at them prior before they come and present. And because they did the presentation within about 15 or 20 minutes. So the one that we would recommend as a committee will come to you all. You all will get an opportunity to see it and then we'll bring it here. We're moving on this quickly. Thank you. I may have missed some things and I don't want to um, belabor the, the report, but I think that this might be a um, topic that might be good for a special meeting in itself. Um, once those that are coming to present um, and the district actually presents the committee with the plan that it has to have that in a me meeting of its own for the board to be able to go over that plan. Um, I know that on the facilities committee before we were attempting to get that wrapped up. So we didn't come into the new year with a plan un unfinalized, but I know that um, that is something that everyone is aware is very pertinent. We have repairs that need to be made. We need replacement. Um, a lot of the board agrees it would be wonderful to have new schools. We might be in um, the place where we need to consider millages from the community, but we need to make sure that we have a plan in place on behalf of the district before we, we get to that point. So I appreciate the work that you all are doing, but I do want you all to consider a special um, committee meeting in person that includes the full board so we can get that fully flushed out. And then I'll go to Trustee Bowens. Um, I, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I also was at the committee and thank you for clarifying that Trustee, I'm Secretary Triplett that we, by no means, because I, um, you know, by no means are we voting no for a broiler right now, but we didn't even go through committee and we're developing a plan that we may be demolishing and asking the taxpayers to build new schools. Commissioner Adams stated it, best you keep on investing money and stuff. And our children deserve what the kids in Bering Springs or St. Joe or Coloma get. They deserve the best. And I thank you for clarifying that, but the um, facilities meeting that we did have and seeing those presentations was great. And I wanna thank and applaud Dr. Butts and Dr. C Mr. Corson um, for having that meeting and showing us the presentation. I think the public would be very interested in seeing it. You know, just the other day, somebody asked me, what are we gonna do with that bank building? Or what are we gonna do with Morton Hill? Now they can see what this facility committee has been working on 
and seeing the future of Bitten Harbor. I think that it's, I think that it's, I, I also want to share this with you all. Like they, they, their components, they didn't just present the facilities piece. They said, okay, they have to have our curriculum to see what it is that we want. What, you know, what we have in our curriculum, if, if our curriculum calls for a strong science piece, that we make sure that we have science labs that are functional. So it didn't just, it, it wasn't just about the facility. They um they did a case study. One of the companies um did some great work with River Valley um, public schools who just recently closed to uh, elementary school and added them to their high school. And so this would be, this is a partnership that would be worked that would that would require, if you will, the citizens to be an active part of what it is that we're doing. So we did ask the question, um, Trustee Gavin, too. If right now, if there, if 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 right now we needed something to be done in May, you know, what would their recommendation be? They said, well, of course, if a building is unsafe and you have students, because hopefully we have students in our best properties right now. But what we have to offer when we look at it, where our schools are housed at MLK, this is our high school, in Fair Plain East and City McCord, that the buildings that we have our students housed in, are they the best buildings? So say for instance, they're gonna go through over every piece of property that we own. And if they find out that Sorter is actually in better condition than what Fair Plain East is, not going by what it looked like because things were left in there and it looked like it just torn up. But if Sorta is better, in better condition, they will give us that recommendation and say, this boiler, this is where you need to have kids just for that particular point. But the, the process of the master plan is intense and it must involve not only the Board of Education, but the community. So this will be coming to you all in the very near future. In the meantime, in between time, work is being done with those people who are working on our boilers. We do not have novices in here. We, the same company that's been servicing these boilers for over 40 years, they are still the ones who know these boilers through and through, they are still working with us. Those are the people that we are in contract with at this particular juncture. Thank you, Secretary Triplett, and thank you all for the comments and questions asked. I'm going to ask that you move into your curriculum committee report. This is, uh, like I said, this is, <laughs> we we try to open it and then we don't have access. So what you can do is give, um, you can email it out to the board. I know a lot of the curriculum related things we've but, kind of discussed. Well, one of the things that we that we did discuss and, and we, we were talking about it, was the CTE director and 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 to give a, in the committee uh, the discussion was held and I think that uh, Trustee Gavin and myself um, specifically said and uh, President Robinson we must have a CTE director that's a non-negotiable and so my question was you know that we 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 don't have money for the CTE director. And I asked the CTE director, and I asked the CTE director, and I asked <laughs> that we don't have money for the CTE director. <laughs> and my question was, whenever we have any other questions about finance, nobody has an answer. But all of a sudden, you know now that we don't have money for the CTE director. How did you come to that resolve so quickly? So this was the discussion that we did have in our curriculum meeting. I'm not going to try. I had the stuff put up. I'm, 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 I'm looking here. I'll just ask that you send it out um, to the board. And then if there's anything, okay, here it is, right? you have it? Yes, ma'am. Um, we also, yeah, so that was, that was one piece that um, we definitely talked about. We also had our discussion about Michigan Virtual, and we expressed some of our concerns about what Michigan Virtual was and how Michigan Virtual went. Because my understanding in the beginning, when 
the, this board decided to accept Michigan virtual, the way in which it was presented, I was under the assumption that we that if, when our kids went on Michigan virtual, that there were actual actual teachers that was teaching every day. I thought our students would be standing before our teachers, only to find out something different. And so the uh, first semester failure rate were presented to us. Um, some of the course, uh, the 2023-2024 course selections were uh, presented at that time. PBIS uh, in Benton Harbor area schools was presented. Um, also, uh, as it relates to the partnership agreement update of the recon reconstitution, does this uh, equate to school closures? So we got clarification on the uh, partnership agreement in our curriculum um, meeting. And MD, it says here, I'm just gonna read the note, MDA states that the terms of reconstitution would be up to the superintendent and the district team if necessary. So those things were, um, were discussed in our meeting. Also, we talked about the school improvement plan and the district improvement plan and how we, the district, improve, the district improvement plan and the school, individual school improvement plan must work in tandem. They are living documents. And we were very concerned that those documents were not up to date, they were not up to par, and they were definitely not in alignment. So the district plans, every other school, all of our schools should be in alignment with the district plan. Bear Plain should not have a separate school improvement plan. ACH, I mean, uh, DEC, everybody in school improvement plan should be aligned with the district plan. So they are, at this particular time, doing research and to, is to report back uh, to us as it relates to what's going on and update us as it relates to our district improvement plan and our school improvement plan. We did talk about field trip requests and the documentation. And I, uh, from the previous meeting, there were some questions about the wrong paperwork, uh, all paperwork being used, what was, what was being submitted to us. I specifically asked the chief, Chief Waddell, and she assured me that when the trips come, that they will have the correct paperwork and documentation. Um, I think, and we did talk about the course catalog. Trustee Gavin, would you like to share anything? No, I believe that uh, Chief Waddell is gonna cover um, anything extra. Okay. Thank you. So that's basically, that's a summary of what? Any additional questions for the curriculum committee? All right, hearing none, thank you, Secretary Triplett, for your presentation. We'll proceed to the policy committee, and the chair is Trustee Gavin, so she's going to go over notes as well as the policy tracking sheet. Thank you, Madam President. I'm going to be very brief. The uh, There's a policy tracking sheet that I believe is very helpful if we can... I don't know if we can share that on the screen or not. Um, this sheet consists of the policies that have been recommended to us uh, to be revised or updated or reviewed. In addition to this sheet are the bylaws that our policy committee um, is looking at. We've organized them in a way so that the um, the board can see the name of the policy. You can see uh, when it was recommended to be revised. You can see you know, whether or not we've gotten started on them or not. And then you can also see at the bottom those policies that have already been revised. So this gives us a tracking sheet so that we can see what it is that we need to do. And we have about 20 or so policies that we need to review. I think it would be to be most efficient is if the, um, the board members can look at those policies um, kind of prior to, and then submit any um, concerns that you have so that when we do meet with our policy committee in two weeks, we will already know what your concerns are and include them in our recommendations so that we can be as efficient with our time as possible. And then if we can go over, there is a change to the bylaw that we would like to recommend. Um, and what this 
change does is it offers a higher level of transparency and an opportunity for the community um, to join our meetings, um, well, view our meetings from YouTube uh, live video. We know that these chairs can be very uncomfortable <laughs> and that, you know, some people have transportation challenges, child care challenges, health care challenges. And so this would, um, this new policy would give you and would give the community an opportunity to um, view our meetings live stream. It doesn't say YouTube, but live stream. And um, also a lot of times people ask us, when is the next meeting? When is the next meeting? So there's an addition on here that um, allows for um, you to request to be added to a calendar invite so that you can be notified when there's a meeting. Um, it's also a robocall to the parents, which already is come, which is already happening. And then we, um, I believe um, Secretary Triplett added that we add notification um, to the uh, each school building as well when we have a, a meeting. And so I guess my understanding is that we're doing a reading today, but I believe Trustee Rockett said that we're able to, are we able to vote from a first time reading? Um, so first time address. reading is to just an actual, I think the we, Plan to do the first reading, I believe last month, but there were some corrections that you all wanted to make. So this would technically be the first reading of the policy as it stands. And then it could go on the agenda for next time for approval. Um, so if you could at minimum read that first paragraph. Okay. Um, so the green is clear. We can have an official first reading of it. The, re the rest of it is pretty much the same. And then we can um, consider it for vote at our next meeting. Absolutely. So um, 0165.1 regular meetings. Within 10 days after the organizational board meeting, the board shall cause to be posted at the board office, all active school offices and in other locations considered appropriate by the board, a notice listing the date, time, live stream electronic meeting information when possible and place of each regularly scheduled meeting of the board. In addition, the district will send an automated call to district families and post board meeting information to social media. Upon request, members of the public will be added to the electronic calendar invite. School board members will receive a calendar invitation via their, their district email. The meeting notice shall also contain the name and address of the district and its telephone number. All right, thank you. And as you all can see, everything that's being suggested to be changed is in green. The rest of the policy is the same as it was previously. So thank you, um, Trustee Gavin. And what I understand is that the last meeting, just wanna make sure I'm understanding your reports. The most recent meeting that you all had was early February, and then you're gonna have one later this month. That is correct. Okay. And I just ask that all board members, just take a look at those policies and the bylaw recommendations, and we will take your concerns into consideration at that meeting. Secretary Triplett. Chairman Gavin, aren't, we scheduled, aren't our meetings scheduled for the third Monday our of Monday each Monday. month? Yes. That's my understanding, the third five Monday. Five to six. From five to six. six. Yeah, five to six p.m. Mm -hmm. I think that we have the third Monday yep. for the policy committee. All right, thank that you all. Correct. And also we requested that the Neola representative join us at that meeting. We're still waiting for a response from him, but if he would be able to join us at that meeting, we can um, also you know, take care of some of these other policy updates uh, with his assistance. So is that this Monday thing, wouldn't that be- I third? believe that is the- In that vacation. Then we I think it's the 27th. It no, but we said we don't. Third work. Monday of each month starting yeah, in March. Um, but due to spring break, we will have our March meeting on March 27th instead of the 20th. Okay, and then moving forward, it's on the third. Right. That is correct. Oh, yeah, because I did say that we are non employees of the district, so we can still have our policy meeting. I was saying they're trying to be funny. But... All right. Thank yes. you all. I just want to call to your attention that you're having conversation without being. Uh, given the mic by the president nor the chair of the committee. I was looking at 
you just do it. I'll put it at the chair. And that concludes my presentation. If there are any questions, I'm willing to entertain those. Any questions? All right, hearing none. Thank you all. Um, we, with the corrections or amendments that was made to the agenda, the, the agenda, the next order of business under the superintendent update is the closed session. And um, as noted on the agenda, the Board of Education will hold a closed session to consider personnel matters under policy 0167.2G. And that is to review specific contents of an application for employment or appointment if the candidate requests that the application remain confidential. It does require a two-thirds vote. Um, for those that are present, we're normally pre pretty quick when we go into these closed sessions. Um, we will return to continue our normal order of business. So at this particular time, I'll ask for a motion to end open session and enter closed session per policy 0167.2G. Madam President, is it possible for us to... Um change the agenda now is it too late right. uh to make a change in the agenda and maybe have the field trip the, uh the so are we able to can yeah can, so much can, field trip. can we go into the session and then do we can amend the to bring the field trips higher is that if that's what you're suggesting right. okay so is there a motion to um in open session and go into closed session so move the motion has been made by secretary triplet is there a support the motion is made by Secretary Triplett and supported by Trustee Rockett Martin. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett. President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bonds. Yes. Secretary Triplett. Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rockett Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion carried. All right, so we are going to enter uh, closed session at effective 8.12 p.m return to open session questions comments or concerns hearing none secretary triplet president robinson yes vice president bond president no do you want to return to open president. session oh yeah sorry yes sorry oh, man. Get good yes secretary triplet yes trustee doyle yes trustee rocket martin yes Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion carry. All right. And if you all would take a look at your agendas, you do have HR resolutions one and two pertaining to the matters in which we entered a uh, closed session. And Dr. Butts, one second, I have to find them. Oh, they're towards the back. If you could just read your recommended actions for each, um, now therefore be it resolved. Okay. <laughs> so staff report H, HR1 and HR2. For staff report HR1, now for now, therefore, it be resolved pursuant to the revised school code section 12309, 12308A10, and 1230G. And after careful review, the board does a, a, it says approve, it does or does not approve, recommend uh, approval for Kenneth Crowder to proceed with employment application process through EDGE staff. Our resolution and parts of the resolution that conflict with the provision of this resolution are rescinded. All right. Is there a motion to approve staff report HR1? Support. The motion has been made by Trustee Vice President Bowens. Is there a second of support? Support. The motion was made by Vice President Bowens and supported by Secretary Triplett. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote for staff report HR1? President Robinson? Yes. Vice President Bowen? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? Trustee Gavin? 
Yes. Motion carried. All right. Next, Dr. Bucks, can you proceed with HR Resolution 2? Now, therefore, be resolved pursuant to the revised school code, section 12309, 12308, 10, and 1230G. And after careful review, the board does or does not approve the I think we're voting does. Does, okay, mm -hmm. does approve uh, to Marion West to proceed with the employment application process through EDUCEF. All resolution and parts of resolution that conflict with the, with the provisions of this resolution are rescinded. I'm sorry, what's your question, Trustee Wallace? That's right, I'll tell you. Is Marion West still with us? This is to Marion West. Okay, sorry. Oh, actually, she was supposed to say something. We just met with them. Okay. Okay. Um, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote for? Oh, is there a motion to approve staff report HR two? So, the motion has been made by Trustee Bowens. Is there? A, I'm sorry, by Trustee Doyle. Is there a second or support? Support. The motion has been made by Trustee Bowens and supported by Secretary Triplett. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote? President Robinson? Yes. Vice President Bowen? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? Yes. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Motion carries. Yeah. Oh, okay. My apologies. Trustee Bowens didn't have those. Handy, I'm sorry. We're gonna proceed. Um, currently as it stands, Dr. Buss is supposed to be presenting a partnership agreement um, video. I would ask if the board would be, uh, if it would be feasible for the board to allow uh, Mr. Jennings and Ms. Gunter for staff report T3 to move up. So they've been so patient. Um, are you all okay with amending the agenda to allow? For them to go next. Okay, can I have a motion to do so? So moved. Is there a second of support? Second. The motion has been made by Secretary Triplett and supported by Trustee Gavin. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, please call the vote for amendment of the agenda. President Robinson? Yes. Vice President Bonds? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? Yes. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Motion carried. All right. So we are going to uh, welcome Mr. Danny Jennings and Ms. Jennifer Gunter. They are here to present the HBCU field trip to us. And then Dr. Buss will be, or Ms. Uh, Chief Waddell will be presenting staff report T3. Welcome. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> I really don't need one of these, but. I will definitely use it today. Thank you for amending the agenda and allowing us to be uh, bumped up a little bit. And um, this is one of my favorite times of the year. So uh, getting ready to expose our young people to some good old historically black colleges and universities. Uh, Ms. Raquette has been a part of our trips. Uh, she's probably in that picture, isn't she? Yep, and I know uh, uh, Trustee Gavin is an alum of HBCU, and we'll get right into it because I know you guys are about ready, huh? That picture right there that you guys are looking at, it's one of the great moments of being a part of things like this. This is uh, the lady in the red is Glendra Campbell from Benton Harbor, who owns GC Feathers a Restaurant in Atlanta, and she fed the entire, the entire trip for everyone. She, she, she invited us gave us some great hospitality, got us some good chicken, and then gave them some history on her, her experience in Benton Harbor. And it, it, it was fabulous. It was great. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of it. But we can move on and go to the next slide. I won't read those things for you, but I will um, we'll play this clip for you to get a, get, a, get a feel for the type of discussions we have and the things that we're trying to ultimately experience with our young people. Yeah, I think we'll have to tie your opening your eyes to positive things. 
open your eyes to, to people that you've been able to make with you came to. There's nothing like the ABC experience. I was in our own here. I was in the I wanted to go to the HBC and take the class and then go out and get a so how about this because i think i don't think you can hear that very well so we can actually move past that and i'll tell you pretty much exactly what i've said because i've repeated this 500 times so i got this to the t for the most part i have attended it four colleges attended it did you guys hear that don't put that on an educator please don't don't repeat that don't tell nobody i said that i've attended four colleges and my hbcu experience by far is the most prominent opportunity that i've spent in higher education it's done so much for me regarding the assistance that you get the support that you get how how everyone at the college takes stock in your success every single person so it's a, it was completely different. And then I have a different perspective also because I went from the HBCU to a PWI for me to have a greater appreciation for what I received at the HBCU because that experience was completely different. I felt like I was more on an island or had to find your clicks to be able to have your support. But at my HBCU experience at Lemoyne on College, every turn you made, Every time you open your eyes, there were people there with some type of resource and some type of advice or just a arm wrapped around you, letting you know that I'm here with you. Let's get through this. So this is just awesome for our young people. And I've had every single piece of fun that you can that you can have watching people actually gain this opportunity. All right. So going down to the next slide here. If you take a look at that picture over here to the left. We're actually in a morgue. I, we, our young people, this is last year, they actually saw dead bodies. And people, if you could smell it and everything. Yes, yes. I know that may not be appealing to everybody, but uh, just actually having a hands-on experience of understanding, like people may have thought they wanted to be a surgeon or something until they walked into this place. Or then there were other people who felt like, oh man, this is actually more awesome than I could have ever even imagined. So they got a chance. We, we all got a chance. I was in there. Did you go in there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was in there. We got a chance to see how they kind of roll them out and how they position things and put things on them to kill the smell, even though we still smelled the smell. It was just a real eye opening. And this is some, one of those things that our, our students get a chance to experience. Um, you know, I won't don't go for it. We were in a medical school um, and they were in a medical facility where the students, the medical students were cutting up a uh, cadaver. So they got a chance to see the, the muscles, the brain. They really, uh, you know, it just opened it right up. To them. That was at Oakwood, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Oakwood University. Oh, if I stay, I'm on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so we can go to the next slide. All right, so they get the full experience, not only an opportunity in the classroom where you're hearing from professors and things of that nature, you also get a chance to, they interacted with students here in the CAF where you see, you can see the guys on one, one side and the girls on the other side, and they got a chance to talk to current college students about their entire experience of not only being at HBCU, but being at that particular school. Because uh, unfortunately, there were some people saying, hey, you might want to pick a different school. And then there were others saying, hey, I love it here. So you just uh, ultimately catch it from all angles, but you get true, uh, what word am I looking for? Authentic feel for everything that's about the experience. And I think that that you can't understate that. Uh, those are the schools listed, though, that we plan on visiting this particular trip, Wil Wilberforce University, Central State, Kentucky State, Tennessee State, Fisk, Arkansas Baptist, and the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. So the, how we generally select that is we geographically, we figure out how much we can afford and how far we can go, and also what are the places that we haven't been to. So you take those two pieces, and then you try to determine what kind of route we're going to take. All right, we can go to the to the next slide. Enrichment activities. This is this was one of our uh, great experiences. I think we went here in 2019. Um, the where they the Little Rock Nine. What, they were here, right? Okay, you guys uh, 
if you don't if you haven't heard about them you can google them and i won't have to give you a history lesson right now but uh, we got a chance to go in that school and really talk to people who had a whole lot to, to offer in terms of the history and the culture and everything that's, that's behind the prestige of being in that institution. Right, um, and that's just an example of the things that we do outside of visit, visiting the, um, the actual institutions, because we don't only do that. We'll go to a museum. We'll, uh, where did we go last year? We went somewhere. Um, yeah, we went to the Coca Cola factory. CNN. CNN. They, mm. they can see. Maybe this is a career you might want to have in journalism. Absolutely. So yeah, we do a we do a lot more with them, and there are some fun things as well. Trustee Rockett Martin, I'm going to ask that you allow them to give their presentation. I, Mrs. Rockett was in her in her element because she's going to. <laughs> but what you're you're reminding us of the privilege that she she received to go on that presentation. So we're going to ask her to allow you to present and save her comments to that time. Thank you so much for being gracious. And thank you. All right, let's uh, move on to the next next slide here. And, and once again, those are, um, that's one of the pictures we took at uh, Coca-Cola factory. And uh, on the left here is what we do every night. We have a debriefing with our students and give them a chance to write about their experience of the, of the day. What are the things that they learned? What are the things they enjoyed? What questions they may have? And we also allow them to discuss it with us. So after they've completed what we've asked of them, we get a chance to break everything down and then get prepared for the next day. But they share with us. So there's the kind of the education part of uh, the trip where they're able to reflect and it's it's mandatory. So, you know, we had to twist a couple couple wrists to, to get stuff done, but that's a part of it. And you guys understand that because you're a part of this district, so you got to twist the wrist sometime. All right, so we can go to the next one here. Oh, yeah, we got that uh, the data here. Click up there. So here's a comprehensive list of everyone that we know of. I'm sure we're missing some names, but there are people who attend HBCUs after graduating from here. And you can take that thing down all the way back to the 90s, maybe the 80s. I'm not sure how far it goes. And we're not going to force you to read every name right now. But as you see, there's a huge representation of HBCU alums who are also Benton Harbor High School alums. And we know that this trip has contributed to so many of those people who have gone on and received higher education of the HBCU variety. Uh, we see Eleanor up there. I, I think we got her in there. We should have you in there now. 94. You can move up a little quicker, please. <laughs> She's trying to, okay, there she is, Elnora Gavin, 1994, mm -hmm. Howard that? University. Oh yeah. Okay, you may proceed. <laughs> so ultimately, the, the, what, what we do, yeah, what we do is we we take a group of students, as you as you see here, we take a whole lot of students, basically whoever is interested and can afford it and, you know, just be a part of this entire experience. We take them to HBCUs, we give them experiences that they otherwise wouldn't get. And they otherwise, last year a student told me this, and I'll kind of wrap it up um, in our little testimonial session. It's like I had no intentions on going to college. I didn't want to go to any college, but this experience right here, he's a senior now. I won't put his name out there because we want to see what he's going to do. But uh, said, but this experience, being able to see that college is more than just sitting down and studying, but there's like a brotherhood with all of the guys and there's a sisterhood over here and there's fun things you can do and there's clubs you can join. And I just thought it was just about going and reading and trying to get smart and like, I'm tired of school. This isn't just school, this is an experience. This is an awesome opportunity to become a better person with all these things that surround us. So that was like one of the best things that I experienced on that trip or on any trip. And I think that continuing this is going to continue building young people such as that. We'd like your blessing. All right, thank you so much, are there? Oh, 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 wait a minute. I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh, okay, she has them. So here, here's some testimonies. I think two of them are still in high school, right? 
and the guy in the middle, Michael, he's at Grambling State uh, currently. Hi, my name is Shamaya Williams, and I'm here to let you know about my experience on Black College Story. My experience on Black College Story is very inspiring. To see Black people with the same common goal as education was very motivating. That motivated me into going to an HBCU college in the future. Just seeing how much Black people can motivate each other and push each other to be better is just amazing and eye-opening. And it made me come in tune to who I am. Hi, my name is Shema. Just seeing how much Black people can motivate each other and push each other to be better is just amazing and eye-opening. And it made me come in tune to who I am. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Priyana Bennett, and I'm here to share with you all how the Black College Tour is beneficial to me. It introduced me to the Black historical universities. It convinced me to attend a Black college instead of a predominantly white institute, which was my first mind. It gave me a better feel to the college world and how life would be on campus, and it also introduced me to different sororities that I could join while I'm in college. That is what the Black College Tour did for me. The Black College Tour really pushed me to go for ABC because I seen so much different stuff on campus. It was just like, if I went to a PWI, I wouldn't experience none of these things. Like as soon as I got on campus, uh, I got helped like by many different people. They didn't have their own, just like the, the hospitality really at a HBCU and really every professor just wants to see you succeed. And the Black College Store really made me open my eye and see like what they had going on there. People say it on campus that dorm curtain probably looks familiar, huh? Hi, my name is my name. All right, so that is what we do. That is what we have. And we're looking forward to enjoying April 3rd through April 8th with your blessing. All right, thank you. Thank you so very much for your presentation and your patience. The um, board report that goes along with the presentation that we've been provided is staff report T3. I'll allow Ms. Waddell to read that. Thank you, President Robinson. Subject request for out-of-state field trip for students at Benton Harbor High School, March 14th, 2023. Reason for board approval, the board shall approve field trips and other district sponsored trips, which are planned to keep students out of the district overnight or longer or out of the state. Facts and analysis, Benton Harbor High School is requesting to take high school students grades 10 through 12 on a college tour. The tour will allow students to visit colleges and universities, historically black colleges and universities in Ohio, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Students will also experience college life and acquaint themselves with curriculum information, entrance requirements, and financial aid resources. The trip is scheduled for April 3rd through the 8th, 2023. This trip will accommodate up to 40 students. It is estimated that there will be five chaperones. This field trip will be Title I grant and student funded. Policy reference, policy 2340, field and other district sponsored trips. Strategic plan goal reference, the mission of Benton Harbor Area Schools is to educate, guide, and inspire students by developing their skills and knowledge to be globally competitive. Recommended action that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education vote to approve the historically Black colleges and universities field trip as presented. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there a motion to approve staff report T3? I move to, re to approve staff report T3. Is there a second or support? Support. The I motion see. has been made by Trustee Gavin and supported by Trustee Doyle. Questions, comments, or concerns regarding the staff report or the presentation? Trustee Bowen. I just wanna um, 
ask two, say two things. One, have we ever thought about making this a requirement in our curriculum for, I don't know, back in the day when I moved to Benton Harbor or when I went to Detroit, it was a requirement that we had to go to Canada, but that was, you know, different. Have we ever thought about doing something like this? That has not come up yet. Okay. No. I just want to say thank you guys. You know, some kids will never, let me rephrase that. Some kids probably would never experience getting out of the 49022 limits and you guys are exposing them. I'm glad to see that you guys are going to climb buff. Um, my cousin is Dr. Brenda Martin. So it's great to see that. And in Tennessee State, my cousin is Charles Galbraith. He's the president of the um, alumni and group chapter and he's big on campus. So if you need any help, let me know. But congratulations. Thank you. Any additional comments from the board? Any questions? President Robinson. You have the floor. I just want to say you had me at HBCU. Y'all didn't, you didn't even have to do a presentation, but I appreciate the presentation. The legacy speaks for itself. And I really appreciate the time and effort that you all are putting into our youth and continuing the legacy of Ms. Golden and Ms. Ross. I know that they are super proud you all are changing lives and I'm just really grateful for your efforts and you have my 100% support. Thank you. Yep. Secretary Triplett. Our first runner up um, to uh, Mr. Ben Harbor is a freshman at Grambling State University. And I think that this exposure is critical um, for our children. He's doing an amazing job of what I've heard. And I mean, just he's just, just all over the place. As I, I, I was in a 4-H. Things with Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I was on I was in 4-H and um here in Benton Harbor and expanded food and nutrition. They took us to Michigan State University um for exploration day. And that was my true first introduction to being on a campus. So I think that it is critical that our children be given an opportunity to go on college campuses, and in particular, to go to colleges, to go on campuses, to see people that look just like them, being successful, being educators, being instructors, and leaders, and all of those things. So I, 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 I appreciate it. I, I wouldn't have the nerve to travel like that on the bus and all those mountain and stuff anymore. <laughs> I used to get on the road at the drop of a hat, but thank you all so much. My um, nephew, my great nephew, two of my great nephews went last year and they had an amazing time. So thank you again. Thank you. Secretary Tribbler, please call the vote for staff report T3. President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bowen. Yes. Secretary Triplett. Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion carried. All right. Thank you all for your patience and your time and your effort. I hope you all have an amazing trip. I do not believe Trustee Raquette Martin is going this time. <laughs> the shame. <laughs> I'm going to say. Um, but you all have an amazing evening. All right. So we're going to pass the floor to Dr. Butts. I know that I asked you all to. Well, well, I would like to take a moment to say something as it relates to the agenda. I was, I did, a, we were, we were very um, strategic in trying to make sure that the agenda was not too long or not too stacked. And so we did not have a lot of items on this agenda that were not pertinent to the business for March. However, from the retreat, um, there were additions that were added. So I appreciate your patience um, as we work through the agenda and trying to uh, finalize some of the things that you all did not get a chance to get to or, or voted to move to this agenda. So um, I just wanted to say that I appreciate your patience, but we're gonna try to push this, three, this thing through. If it's anything that's not pertinent for us to do this evening, we could possibly move to April, but we're gonna keep it rolling. Uh, Dr. Butt. Yes, ma'am. Can I go ahead and get started? Huh? I just gotta go and get started. Yeah, you you are on um part. It's your turn. You have the floor. Okay, with the partnership agreement, I sent the board a uh, video to review. It's a fifteen minute video that we'll be putting out to the public. 
I didn't I didn't want to take the time tonight to do the 15 minute video unless you wanted to see it, but um, you all have pre uh, previous uh, access to it. We'll be making that public tomorrow on our website and uh, social media so that the community can see it. Has everyone had an opportunity to review that video? I have. I did and I have a um, question about it. So would you be able to maybe make that a goal for Friday? Is that delaying anything? If you were to receive some feedback from, give them an opportunity to give you the feedback. I know you asked for it before. Yes, ma'am. Um, but can we maybe give the board through Friday to give you feedback before we, we release it? Yes, ma'am. That's, okay. that's All right. So we're going to keep it moving. Strategic plan up. Go ahead. Can we give feedback now? Um. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, when I reviewed the video, it was a town hall <clears throat> with the state representative. I may not be saying her title properly, but it's somebody from the state and it's a Q and A. And so my concern about that video is she is citing us, you know, as this bottom <clears throat> percentage in the state. And to put that video out, <clears throat> without putting out any type of information in terms of, you know, why this uh, school reform office was eliminated and the damage that the state did to the district. I think it's unfair to the district to just put out that information without putting out any type of historical um, information about how we got here. Mm. So I don't have a problem um, with the Q&A, that is their representation of us. But I think that we have a responsibility to have um, our narrative uh, very clear and our communication uh, plan very clear as well before it goes out to the public or you know on the tour bus or any other avenue. Okay. Secretary Triplett. President Robinson and Dr. Burns. I feel like I don't know anything about this plan as a board member. I, I don't know who been talking to the state. Uh, maybe you all got that in your one-on-ones or something. Cause I, I, I just feel like one person should not be representing us, especially a person um, not to do any any shade on the superintendent or anything, but I, I I'm just not clear on this, and I really do not. I don't feel good about this at all. I don't. I don't feel like because see this day this is not something that a, a novice can come and do. When we talk about the history of Ben Harbor area schools in the state of Michigan, and so I do not. I don't feel informed enough. I don't feel included. And what's going on? I don't know what's going on. And I, I, I've waited. I haven't heard anything about it. Who, who's been up there from us? Trustee Gavin has attended a meeting. Okay, well, I, I haven't heard anything uh, else myself. Mm -hmm. And I think just because of the email that's being sent out or what have you, and I know we probably would present it tonight, but I just, I don't feel good about this. I don't feel informed enough about this i don't feel comfortable and i will um be watching the video tonight as i slumber after this okay meeting. so we're gonna ask that we i know we have a curriculum committee meeting and i think the last meeting that we had where we wanted to go over this dr bus was not able to be present so if we could make this an agenda item um so curriculum can go over the actual draft as it stands and be able to answer some questions. And Dr. Buss, I know that you all are ready to send out the video, but if we could put a pause on that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're going to proceed. Um, did you have any major updates for the strategic plan? Just that the, um, the school, the district um, in school improvement plan is in place and the individual schools improvement plans um, they were requested as a, a deadline for today. There were one or two items left from, um, I, like, I think, three of the schools, but they're pretty much up to date and in alignment with the strategic plan. 
and I'll be presenting those through the committee meetings as well. Okay. And then the next thing is the grant funds updates. I know that this is something extending from Saturday, but I did not have a full understanding as to what the expectation for this that was because it was the will of the board. Um, I just, it's on there, but I don't really know what type of um, update you're presenting, but I'll allow you to proceed. And it'll be quick. Um, with the ESSA funds, we still have the ESSA 2 and the ESSA 3 funds that we are currently working on. Um, please note that we are in the absence of a CFO and we are working through our um, our contracted uh, auditing firm to, to get those funds drawn down. The ESSA 2s that will be drawn down are in the um, in the area amounts of 12 million. The ESSA 3s will be in the amount, when we get to those, in the amount of 21 million, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll make sure I get the, the correct numbers on those for the ESSA 3s and what they are geared for. Um, the literacy grant that we have, the MICSLD MI grant that we have, we're still working through that. It's a five-year, $5 million grant that we're working on. Uh, the Ben Harbor Education Foundation, I got to get more information as to um, when that was started. That was prior to um, my starting and, and how funds are requested through them. I am still working on that information. Um, in the sinking fund update, just to give some clarity to that, when I stated before of things that were being taken out of this, that were funded through the sinking fund were things that were funded this summer when I first started, they were um, sent through uh, the finance committee and approved through the board and they were, they were purchase services through our CFO at the time. Um, some of these things that were with the pipes that burst during the, during the um, holiday break, we were actually able to claim those on in, on our insurance, and we'll be we will be reimbursed for those. So with that, those reconciliations have not occurred. So that's why I couldn't give a give a definite answer on the amount of sinking funds because we have money that went out and some money that will be coming back from our insurance policies. Um, you missed title funds. And the title fund, sorry about that. I did send that out to the board of what uh, our title person sent to us. Um, we have Title I, Title II, Title IV, Section 41 Bilingual, the Regional Assistant Grant, the MIC SLD Literacy Grant, and the First Robotics Grant. Um, in those, it included the salaries, the benefits, the purchase services, the supplies and materials, the capital outlay, other expenses, the total expenses, and the total allocation from each grant, and the percent in salary and benefits from each grant that I sent to the board in reference to that. And I can make that a public document if, if necessary, if needed. Okay, and I'm going to ask one quick question and then we'll move forward. The ESSER, the ESSER three funds that are an estimated $21 million, I know that when the district uh, submitted an application for ESSER funds. The application was for specific things. Yes. Can you check into um, whether or not those funds are things, I know they're already allocated to certain services or certain expenses, but do we have the flexibility with the ESSER, the ESSER funds to look at boiler replacement and things of that nature? So if you can kind of um, work with the finance office with the monies that we are expecting that are coming in and, and really kind of, you know, I know that that was a hot topic, but essentially what the board is wanting is for us to, to work it out and make sure that we have the funds to do it and, and where it can come from. So if you can kind of look into that for us. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I noticed that we don't have business and finance, teaching and learning. Um, you had a question. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm assuming that our interim superintendent is already versed on these um, on these grant funds. And so I'm wondering if that's a question that you could answer at this time. Um, since the boilers is on the agenda today and it was on the agenda on Saturday. So my question is, 
are these funds something that can be used uh, for that? And then are these funds also, is can we use these funds to finance certain positions as well? These funds for ESSA twos were- Any of these. ESSA twos were the funds that, that they're, of course, they're all one and done. And those are the ones that will be, what we were using those for was to uh, backcast and supplant. Typically under law, you can't supplant funds, but there was a waiver of the law due to COVID to supplant those funds. ESSA threes are allocated to those things um, that are structurally um, the, the, for educational purposes and some for structure. So um, those allocations were made, but we can make adjustments or amendments, excuse me, to those, um, to how those funds were allocated. And since these have come up as an urgent need, those are some things that we can go back and look at in, in, our, in our amendments to that. So the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. So that's about 33 million. All of it can't be yeah, but to, for, to one project, but absolutely. yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Question. Or statement. statement. Um, so Dr. Buss, when you say, I'm going to give you the floor, Secretary, when you say supplanting, I just want to make sure that it's clear that these are funds that have been spent, but the grant allows us to go back and recapture and, and re uh basically put the, the funds back in. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so I know that we have new members on the board. Um as it relates to what Esther was wrote for, and I would need a reminder myself because I know it was specifics that were outlined in those grants as to what can be spent, what you all asked for. So if you all can kind of go over that in the finance committee more in detail, um, when those fundings, when that funding comes in, what pieces of it could be utilized, if any, for the purpose of facility upgrades that are needed and then Secretary Triplett. These ESSER funds are not just for central administration to make decisions, period. I am, uh, they're not. When these ESSER funds were distributed to Ben Harbor and to Flint, the, everything's supposed to go through this board along with them. <clears throat> they're talking about ESSER 2 and ESSER 3. I haven't heard anything about ESSER 1. Where's the report that the money has been spent on ESSER 1, where is the report? Where was this money spent and who approved it? You weren't here at that particular time. Hungerford is up there now. There has to be documentation. I think we are being negligent if we don't get on top of what's going on with these ESSER funds as a board of education. And if we, we should be able to ask tomorrow for a report of every dime spent for ESSER 1. It is not just their decision. It is not for us to sit here and say, what can you do with this? We are supposed to be involved in this. We have millions of dollars. And, and some of this money can go to projects and things such as boilers and um, air systems and all of these different types of things. So we're in, we're in phase two. When is this money supposed to be spent? We need to start moving on this quickly. First of all, we need to know what we have because at this time, we don't know what we have. Everybody got this, you know, the last administration, they didn't have it. This administration, they don't know it. Now, but money is being spent. So I want to know where can I get a report of where this money is, what was spent for ESSA 1, and who spent and who made the decision and who approved it. I know that we previously had a presentation by the former CFO regarding uh, ESSA 1. Yep. Yes. So if we could, <laughs> oh, no, if we could, president. thank you, if we could pull that um, presentation, Liz, that was provided to the board on where ESSER fund, the ESSER funds went uh -uh. or what they were spent on and send that out to us so we have it. Secretary Triplett, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You asked for the status <laughs> of the funds. And what I am asking is that we receive the most recent update that we 
were given because the current board members may not have seen that information. I'm not disregarding what you're saying, but I'm asking for us to be given what we were given previously as a refresher. Madam, and Madam, I agree. You Madam have the President, floor. I don't want to see them, them things that he gave us with all them, them, them numbers. Then don't open it. That, no, no, no. I want to see specifically the report, itemized report. If they don't have it, then I need to know that. Because those numbers and 000, zero, zero XYKZ double, that's the stuff that was presented to us. And again, there should be a simple report that said $200,000 was spent for pencil. Uh, $50 was spent for shoes. If they, that's the kind of report I want to see. Understood. Thank but Ms. Goodwin, can you please send out the previous presentation so we can review what was shared with us before? And Dr. Buss, I know you have your, your um, details as to what um, we are requesting. Yes, ma'am. All right. And there are also parameters around it, but I'll provide those as well. Correct. Um, so we're going to proceed with the agenda with uh, teaching and learning. Ms. Batiste Waddell. Thank you again, President Robinson. I'll move quickly. Um, I'm just going to start with the course selection guide and then do the two field trips after that. Um, so the course selection guide, um, first thing I will do is go over what the changes were so that everybody's understanding of those changes. Okay. Again, um, in an effort to have our students be able to uh, select courses in the spring for the fall, um, our intent is to have this course selection guide approved by the board so that we can go right into scheduling for next school year. Um, so to start off. There's a slight uh, echo. Okay, I didn't know. I don't know, go ahead. Keep going, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get myself organized, so I'll wait for a second here. It's kind of crazy. Okay, here we go. First page, you'll see the picture change. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just gonna go over all the changes that were made. Okay, so if you saw Madison, that was not there before. Okay, back at the top. Thank you, Liz. <clears throat> On page, one more, if you go back. Second page, I'm sorry. Right in there. So that's an update. Okay, just letting you know what all the updates are. On page two, yeah, there is an echo, I hear it. I uh, made sure I updated all the board members' um, names. Page three, you'll see another picture change. Got some CTE work going on there. Page four, you will start to see all the page numbers start to increase over time because we're adding to the book, okay? So if you were to look at the old version compared to the new version, all of these page numbers are now different. Same thing for page five, page numbers are now different because we're adding to the book. Page six remains the same. Page seven, again, an update of a picture. Page eight, same. Page nine is the same. Hold on, hold on. Liz. <laughs> Try to see where you are, okay. Okay, thank you. Page 10, same. Page 11, the same. Page 12, the same. When we get to 13, we are now discussing administrative guidelines for testing out. The previous course selection guide had a line under the second set of information where it said that students may not take a test for a class they have already taken and failed. That is actually against state policy. They are allowed to continue to take, take tests for classes that they have failed. So that has completely come out. They can retake tests and tests out of classes that they have failed. So that's a major change. Um, page 13, that was it. Page 14 is the same. Page 15 is the same. 16 is the same. 17 is the same. 18 is the same. 19, same. 20, same. 21, the same, 22, the same, 23, the same, and then 24, we added hip hop literature. That is a new course um, in our course selection guide. 
The students will engage with American literature through the lens of hip hop culture. Knowledge of self and community is a hip hop element that will be explored in a variety of writing modes. Regular in-depth reading will analyze lyrics and informational text. Students will be validated for their own expertise on hip hop music and culture, and will have opportunities to share their knowledge through projects. This is a semester course. Each semest semester is a um, credit each. It is an MMC English credit. And currently it is not NCAA status, but we will be working on that. We just got to finish getting all of the curriculum together to submit. But we have started the application process and we have 60 days to do that. Page 25 is the same. 26 is the same. 27 is the same. 28 is the same. 29 is the same, 30 is the same, 31 is the same, 32 is the same. When we get to page 33 at the bottom under dance, you'll see that we have now an intro to fashion design course. Um, this course is designed to provide students with a foundational understanding of how to become a fashion designer, merchandiser, or stylist. Students will learn the basic elements of fashion design sketches and start to develop their own designs by understanding, analyzing, and drawing their own fashion figures. Semester course, one credit. Okay, page 34, same. 35 is the same. 36 is the same. 37 is the same. 38 same, 39, same. When we get to page 40, we are adding, there's actually a couple of things that change in our career and tech education section. Um, just reorganized it. We have all of our CTE pathways towards the top of that section. And then starting on page 40, we have titled the remaining courses, experiential learning and or dual enrollment classes. So what the adjustments are, the additions are, the first one is the teacher cadet. That is going to be an experiential learning course. Um, it is designed to help students, you know, learn about the field of education. They'll be provided opportunities to actually do work-based learning, to actually go on field experiences. Um, we are still in the process of applying for that to make sure that that is ready to go for the fall. Um, the main focus will be teaching, but the course does expand to all aspects of the field of education. Um, it's a year-long, two-credit course, elective credit, and again, it's not NCAA approved yet, if we're able to do that. Then on page 41, you're going to see a lot of additions, <laughs> um, and these are all, again, in the experiential learning or dual enrollment courses. Um, so the first one is intro to travel and tourism. Our future goal is to expand our CTE to the hospitality and tourism management pathway. Currently, we just have culinary arts. We want to expand it to the full-blown SIP under hospitality and tourism. But until we do so, to start off, we're going to start with this intro to travel and tourism course. Um, it's going to be an elective to start, but eventually it's going to transfer into a pathway um, once we're done with the application process that's due in September. Um, again, that's a year-long course, two credit hours. It'll be considered an elective credit. And the purpose of the course is to, you know, teach the students th the industry of lodging, travel, and tourism, recreation, amusements, attractions, food, beverage, operations, um, and everything that falls under travel and tourism. Allied Health 1 and 2 are next. Again, our event, our Future goal is to make allied health a pathway, CTE, but until then, we are going to make that an elective credit slash dual enrollment course. Um, again, we did have a, a great population of students that are interested in the allied health field, so that was exciting to see that data. Um, but each one of these courses, again, a year long, two credit hours, can either be an elective credit um, and or dual enrollment. There is prerequisites for Allied Health 2, and those are listed. That's HEAL 101 and 103, and that's what they will get in Allied Health 1. 
English 101 through Lake Michigan College and English 102 through Lake Michigan College. Again, those are going to be dual enrollment courses. Um, we have students that are currently taking those courses and the high school would like to continue to see those um, as dual enrollment offerings. And then our last one will be National Government 101. Again, a dual enrollment offering for our students. Okay. Um, and then 42 is the seminar advisory series. There were no changes there. And then our final page 43, there were no changes there. What questions? I think I went over everything, yes. So go ahead and read your staff report and we'll try okay, to utilize questions in the okay, same time you. frame. All right. Should I open up the right one? Staff report T1. Subject Benton Harbor High School course guide date March 14th, 2023. Reason for consideration, the board annually approves the high school course guide, facts and analysis. The guide includes information on all available courses, information on personal curriculum, individual development plans, and options for earning credit. Policy reference 5460 graduation requirements, 2230 course guide, Strategic plan goal reference, the mission of Benton Harbor area schools is to educate, guide, and inspire students by developing their skills and knowledge to be globally competitive. The recommended action is that the Benton Harbor area schools board of education approves the Benton Harbor high school course guide. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve staff report T1? The motion has been made by trustee Bowens. Is there a second in support? The motion was made by trustee Bowens and supported by uh, trustee Doyle. Vice President Bowens and supported by Trustee Doyle. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. Question. Trustee Gavin, and then we'll go to Trustee Raquette Martin. Um, uh. I'm always grateful to you, Chief Waddell, for expanding um, our offerings um, with, with what you have. So I appreciate that. I do have a question, and you may have answered it in committee, and I might just be mixed, you know, not remembering the details. I was wondering if Swahili was going to be offered as a foreign language or some type of um, course in the catalog. I'm, I'll just ask all of the questions so that way I don't lose my time. So that was the question about Swahili. The other question was about JMG and JAG. Um, I understand that those classes are through Connexus, which also has a a charter high school that competes with us. Mm -hmm. And so I was just wondering, you know, is that, <clears throat> is there a possibility of us offering a similar course in-house? And um, the third question was, is Lake Michigan College the only college that our students are able to dually enroll? Um, you know, if there was another college interested and working with our students does, you know, would the course catalog allow for that? <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Dr. Butts, did you want to speak to that first question? With the, with the Swahili? Yes. When we looked at the Swahili, we looked, what we did was we looked around the state of Michigan and it's not offered anywhere else in the state of Michigan. Um, what we were trying to do is make sure we stay aligned to our strategic plan, which make our students globally competitive. Um, so that was one of the considerations that we took with, with Swahili and what our students can do. Um, if taught that, what, what would they be able to do outside of, of the area? So at this point, at, just at this time, we decided to continue on the track that we were on. So that was the consideration. So is we you? No, ma'am. Who is the we? Because I'm pretty sure. I, we, I spoke with Chief Waddell about it, and I haven't, I haven't had a chance to speak in the committee and or with our curriculum director as well. Okay, because that came out of curriculum committee, and we were happy with that. I, that meeting, I must, I had. You weren't missed. present. I wasn't, you I wasn't present. Probably now. at the Benton Harbor Education Foundation meeting. There were extra questions that Ms. Gavin asked. Who's the trustee? Why she's going to do? 
Yeah, I was going to ask about the senior project. There were oh, two sorry. other questions. Yeah, and I didn't know if she was finished with that first question. That's why I paused. I apologize. I can move on if you would like, or if you had more to go ahead. We'll answer the other question. Um, as far as looking outside for other colleges, I have not explored that, but I can explore that. I know that transportation will be number one, getting the students there. So I have to keep that in mind. Other than that, um, I don't think there's any barriers that can stop us from going outside of LMC. I think we go to LMC because it's close, it's familiar, it's what's been happening here, but that doesn't mean that we can't explore other opportunities. Um, and I do apologize, your third question, I forgot it. Just wondering um, if we have any type of plan. I know that uh, JMG, J, yes, JMG. You know, we have amazing teachers that I would, you know, if it was up to me, we would have hired them in, you know, to our district. Um, but I was just wondering if there's any type of plan understanding that they, I think we paid them. Um, I'm not sure how that works. But if there's a plan to bring those type of courses in-house instead of contracting out to a competitor that um, has a charter high school. I've written that down to begin the research on that. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Raquel Martin. Yes. I wanted to ask about the senior projects. Um, every senior has to do one, right? Before graduation. Is that how we go? Not that I'm aware of. We have a sen senior project course and we okay. have identified students in that particular course, but I oh, okay. do not believe we have a expectation where every senior does a project at the high school. Okay. No. When they do their projects, do they display them? Is there a, is there a possibility that we could even do a, a um, from that class, a display for the community? So currently the intent for senior project course was for them to go to the senior leadership conference. They're also okay. studying the seven highly effective teens book okay. as well. Mr. T. James is working with the students now to identify what they believe is a need for their building or for mm. the district. They will be um, enact, acting on whatever they see fit is that need that they want to address. The district uh, project that I've assigned to them um, coming up in April, and I have not had a chance to talk about this to the curriculum committee yet. So don't know if you want me to move forward or not, but okay. it's not coming up until April. Um, but in April, we had a, an opportunity to connect with Surrett Nature Center, mm -hmm. um, and we're doing something on Earth Day. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have three trees donated to our district, and those students will be helping plant those trees across our district. Um, but again, that's a that's a surprise to the board table, I guess, because I didn't have a chance to tell curriculum committee yet. Um, but that is what that particular course of students they're doing, what they're okay. working on. And we talked about the disparities of trees um, in underprivileged, under-resourced communities, the need for the trees here. I had I zoomed in experts from Indiana that talked to this senior group about trees so they see and understand that purpose um, as of right now. Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. You have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, the tree thing, I love it because we just recently found out in Britain Harbor history, are you probably seen? I saw the data. I have it about the tree. I don't know about that tree, but okay. About well, trees. we found out about a black first settler, mm. um, and so often our kids are taught about the Mortons, and he was a slave, former slave, escaped the Civil War, moved to Britain Harbor, and owned a tree business at that time when blacks weren't there. So I'm so excited about that. Let me know more. Um, I also am excited about this plan. Um, I do have a question on the hip hop. Yes. Literacy. What made you guys go that route? And so, is this, I mean, I know our kids are wanting to be musical stars. So we got to get out of that mindset that they can be. Sorry. That, but what, I'm just want to see you train right. the thought on it that. Is, and just so you know, the intent is not to make musicians. The intent is to use the culture of hip hop to teach oh. literature. There's okay. a lot of metaphors, similes, language, vocabulary, all kinds of things that show up in hip hop that we can use to teach literature. So where it comes from, Dr. Chris oh. Edmond, which um, uh, Trustee Gavin has been made aware of him today. I saw the Facebook post. But there's an educator guru out there. His name is Christopher Edmond. He has written two books, and he also is a big pusher of hip-hop education. 
So just in my research, my experience, I've connected with him. I know about the push. It's really big right now in high schools using hip hop to teach literature. And so um, I connected with his business, his entity, to look at the curriculum, to have conversations on what that would look like. Um, and so, yes, they use the book Can't Stop, Won't Stop as their primary curriculum book. It's a, it's a chapter book, but they use that as their source along with other supplemental materials. But then we use, again, the culture of hip hop to teach literature concepts, nonfiction. So it's something that's big in education okay. right now. So, so I, I, I love that, that it's big in education and it's a new concept. But my, I guess it's their data that proves that. Um, not, not that I can just go kick up and hold. No, it's all about okay. instructional strategies, practices. It's about uh, differentiation, tapping into the interest. So there, are, there is studies around differentiation. And when we tap into the interest of our students, then they're more likely to be engaged in the process. There is that kind of data, um, but specific to using hip hop. Like increasing not test scores. Yeah, not necessarily. Okay, my next question is on the language part. I know Trustee Gavin, but Swahili, have you worked in districts currently? Or what's mostly that you see in this area that with the language teaching? Can you restate your question? Okay, I'm sorry. When you go to different schools, or you yeah. study different schools around here from Bering Springs, Bitten Harbor, All Clare, to all of the other schools, what language do you notice is the most? Are any other schools teaching Swahili? No, and that's not how it came to my office. It actually came to my office from Principal Roseburg, who has a person that he knows that wanted to teach it. Um, it was low cost. It was actually, a, I thought, a great opportunity. We have teacher shortage, you know. Um, so no, it wasn't about looking at other districts and seeing what they were providing, which is probably Spanish, at least Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, it was about the, the opportunity that we have to actually have a teacher teach this. Um, to our students. That was the rationale. And like I said, Fred brought it to my office. I explored it and we move forward the way that we're moving forward. So, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I have two, um, two comments. I actually like the hip hop um, literature piece. I think that it's very important to realize that hip hop and music is poetry and you're, you're teaching the children different various writing structures um, in a manner that is catchy um, and interesting to them because they love hip hop. And sometimes we think about hip hop as just being um, a music that we listen to, but it's really something that has transcended the world and not only our culture, but the world. So I think it's, it's uh, I like that we are exploring that avenue and I might just be biased as an English um, person. So I, I really do like that. And I do remember us discussing uh, Swahili as a potential option. Um, I don't know that I remembered that there was someone that wanted to volunteer at low cost. And um, when, when I think about it and looking at the strategic plan and trying to prepare the kids to be glo globally competitive, I could understand the piece of whether or not that's something that they're actually going to apply to um, a career or enhance them culturally. But if it's, I guess, looking at whether or not it's going to be an additional expense to the district or if it's low cost, like you said. So it sounds like there's a, quite a bit of questions that we have regarding the course selection guide. And I'm wondering, is this something that we have to vote on today in this meeting? The only reason why I was trying to move quick is because I would would like the high school to start scheduling kids and past practice from what I've gathered it has not been a smooth process they're doing things are happening last minute so I'm really trying to finalize it so that we can one start posting positions two start looking at students getting them scheduled but it you know it's up to you all I'm just telling you what I was trying to do <laughs> okay so we we currently have a motion on the floor correct good discussion right yeah, we, I just want to make sure I know where we are. Have we already approved T1? Have you read it? No, Trustee Barnes uh, and then uh, Trustee Doyle second. So we're in the question piece of that motion to approve T1, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, first of all, you know, it, 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 for me, we've had these catalogs. These catalogs are not new. Um, when a a student comes 
and say that they're taking a class they just were placed in a class that they've already taken and mastered. This is just the same stuff just keep coming to this table. And now it's starting to become professionally and ethically offensive to me. I'm just, that, that's where I'm at right now. So, um, but the, the hip hop, I think is absolutely amazing. I think there's a lot of discussion, you know, it, it, and, and to it. To be personal, personally, I don't care what they're doing in Barron Springs, St. Joe, or anybody else. I really don't, because I don't look at them as a standard. Okay, I've been here all of my life. We set the standard for our students. So just because they don't teach it, they wouldn't teach Swahili in Barron Springs, but they should, because they're very diverse. So, uh, and, and like I said, St. Joe has never set the standard for me as a tiger, okay? Because number one, we also, we, we push about what we want to do. We have some rich cult culture as a people and it's black kids in the school. And so if it's a court or, or just a, an elective that some of our kids are interested in, why not? That's the way I feel about it, you know? Globally, globally what? That's just, that's a buzzword. Globally competitive. <laughs> Anyhow, that's for me. But I, I just don't want it to be, I, don't, I just don't want any of you all new or not to think that I'm not aware of what's happening. I'm not aware about what's going on, the lack, because what it does, it looks like a lack of communication with this high school staff and upstairs. And the principal is in charge of the school because I've seen, I've sat in that seat where people have come in and disrespected that chair over and over again. And I hope that this is not happening again. So for me, I, 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 I don't see any problem with Swahili and I don't see any problem with rap. I honestly don't. That's for me. And I, I, I don't, I, I don't think you get any more global. Sorry. So I'm sorry. Some is something wrong. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm gonna call the police and call. Okay, so we're we're going to. Um, I guess my question that I'm at right now is: it sounds like there is there's some amendments that maybe the board is interested in. Um, and I just don't know whether, I know that you want to, I know that you want to get this approved today, but I think that we would technically have to see the amendments as they are before we actually approve them. Um, I don't know if there's any other thoughts on that. Are we wanting to try to table this and bring it back or do we want to approve it as it stands? How soon does she do that? And I can redo it. Go ahead. I was going to say you could do that, and then I can bring it forth again in April with the new, the new. So we stuff. can approve it as it is, and yeah. then bring back for, fourth amendments. Yes. Okay, I like that idea, you guys. Okay. So, um, I'm going to, in the absence of Secretary Triplet or ask Liz to call the vote in the. Um, oh, he's walking back in. Secretary Triplet, what we what we're going to do is is call the vote for staff report T1 as the guide stands, and then she'll bring amendments um, back to the board as, as we discuss them in the curriculum committee. So we're gonna approve it as it is so she can proceed and move forward with business or take the vote to approve. And then any amendments will come back before us in April. Okay. President Robinson. Something wrong, Liz? Okay, yes. Secretary Triplett, yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion carried. 
All right, next up we have hospitality and tourism management and teacher cadet program. I yes. believe those are just one staff report. Yes, and just so you know, the hospitality and tourism management, that is a link to the book that we are going to be uh, fortunate enough to receive through a grant from the MRLA, Michigan Restaurant Lodging Association. They have a program expansion grant and they are going to be supplying our district 30 books, 30 copies of this hospitality and tourism management book. This book is more aligned with state standards, credentials, um, and industry standards um, across the industry of hospitality and tourism. So I just wanted to highlight that. And then the second link that you see is the teacher cadet program. That's pretty much the syllabus or guide to the program. Um, everything is there that they need so far to make the program, you know, start off and run smoothly. The curriculum that we are hoping to secure is titled Experience Education. It's under course materials. Um, Experience Education is a nationally used teacher cadet program curriculum. Um, it's been around for over 30 years. Again, I vetted it, tried to, you know, I did talk to the representative from it, learned about it. And so that seems to be the best resource. Really, it's the only resource that's out there that's an actual textbook that's exploring education. So those are the two curriculum pieces. Um, so I can go into the staff report next. You can go ahead and read the staff report. Okay. Yep. Subject, adoption of textbooks, date, March 14, 2023, submitting for board consideration. The Board of Education shall approve all textbooks used as part of the educational program of this district. Textbook for purposes of this policy shall mean the principal source of instruction material for any given course of study in whatever form the material may be presented that it is available or distributed to every student enrolled in the course. The superintendent shall develop administrative guidelines for the selection of textbooks that includes effective consultation with professional staff members at all appropriate levels. Adoption of, uh, excuse me, a policy reference 2510, adoption of textbooks 2210, curriculum development 2220, adoption of courses of study, so strategic plan goal reference, the mission of Benton Harbor Area Schools is to educate, guide, and inspire students by developing their skills and knowledge to be globally competitive. Competitive, Recommended action that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education votes to approve adoption of the textbook adoption guide. And the last piece I forgot to say, um, just real quick, the teacher cadet program, the cost is $750. That's to train the person that's going to be the instructor and to have access to the textbooks. All right, thank you. Is there a motion to approve staff report T2? I move to approve staff report T2. Is there a second of support? Second. The motion has been made by Trustee Gavin and supported by Trustee Doyle. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, please call the vote for staff report T2. President Robinson? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? Yes. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you. And we've already done staff report T3 for the field trip to the to the HBCUs. Yeah. Um, I believe if I'm not mistaken, we were already presented Wisconsin Dales. Yes. Yeah. So you can go forth with reading the staff report T4. Okay. T4, subject request for out-of-state field trip for students at Benton Harbor High School, March 14th, 2023, reason for board approval. The board shall approve field trips and other district sponsored trips, which are planned to keep students out of the district overnight or longer or out of the state. Facts and analysis. The Benton Harbor High School staff are requesting to take their students to Mount Olympus in the Wisconsin Dells as their senior class trip. The trip is scheduled for March 20th through the 23rd, 2023. This is an overnight trip where the students will celebrate the community and friendships they have built during their time at Benton Harbor Area Schools. It is anticipated that 21 students and four chaperones will attend. The admission fees for this entire trip, as well as the bus costs, will be 100% funded by the students. Policy reference. Policy 2340, field and other district sponsored trips. Recommended action that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education vote to approve this senior field trip to Mount Olympus in the Wisconsin Dells. Is there a motion to approve staff report T4? So moved. Is there a second or support? Support. 
The motion has been made by Secretary Triplett and supported by Trustee Gavin. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote for staff report T4? President Robinson? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? Yes. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Motion carries. All right, next we have, before we proceed, did we catch the time that Trustee Bowens had to step out for a brief moment? <clears throat> Nine thirty-six. Okay. All righty. Next, we have staff report T five, and this is the Benton Harbor High School first robotics competition for twenty twenty-three. I don't think we've been presented this one. Right. I can. I can do that first. Okay. If, okay. All righty. So first off, I just want to say on record, congratulations to Ms. Mason and her team for their weekend uh, success. I'm sure Dr. Butts will be speaking to that, but I just had to throw something in there. All right. Thank you. So Ms. Mason is hoping to take her students um, to Battle Creek Lakeview High School in Lakeview, Michigan, the 25th through the 27th of March. Um, she is hoping to take seven students. There will be two chaperones to the first robotics competition 2023 competition. So first robotics, 2023 first robotics competition. Um, of course, this is around STEM. Um, they are going to be applying everything that they have learning about robotics, science, mathematics, tech to make their robot work and compete. Um, there will be a pre and post survey to analyze if the students have mastered the real world um, experience. STEM curriculum teaches students real world troubleshooting, you know, how to enhance networking skills um, and so forth for their robot. Practicing projects, some uh, pre-lessons, practicing projects, some students learn Java and how to use regular and electronic tools to achieve their goal. Post-trip activities, review the lesson, learn and improvements for the future. Robotics is hoping to be a year-round opportunity for our students. Um, and so the cost of this, this was funded through, we actually received, sorry. Um, we did receive a first robotics grant that covered the costs. And then currently we have submitted an application to the Benton Harbor Education Foundation to cover the remaining cost um, for this trip. I do you not believe You can proceed with the board report. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, Subject request for overnight field trip for students at Benton Harbor High School, date March 14th, 2023. Reason for board approval, the board shall approve field trips and other district sponsored trips, which are planned to keep students out of the district overnight or longer or out of the state. Facts and analysis. The Benton Harbor High School staff are requested to take their robotics competition students to Lakeview High School in Lakeview, Michigan. This trip is scheduled for March 25th through the 27th, 2023. This is an overnight trip where the students will allow the students to bond with other like-minded students and explore and compete in the world of STEM. It is anticipated that seven students and two chaperones will attend. All costs for the trip will be funded by the first robotics grant and additional funding will be available through the Bitten Harbor Education Foundation. Policy reference, policy 2340, field and other district sponsored trips. Recommended action that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education vote to approve the robotics competition field trip to Lakeview, Michigan. Is there a motion to approve staff report T5? So moved. Is there a second of support? Second. The motion has been made by Secretary Triplett and supported by Trustee Raquette Martin. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, please call the vote for staff report T5. President Robinson? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin? Yes. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Trustee Terry? All right, awesome. And congratulations to the robotics team as well. Uh, Mr. Corson, we are putting the ball in your hands to, to bring us on home. Um, I know we only have two major items or sections left. And I believe you indicated Mr. Burnick. Is he, he's already... So Dr. Bernick has already left. Um, you had asked during the break that we table some things. See if anything. Okay. Yeah. So is so, that going to come back? Oh, you talked about doing a merged meeting with. 
Yeah, so okay. one of the possibilities is for us to present that to the curriculum committee. Um, and if the curriculum committee would like us to, we could also present to the board um, at the next meeting. I know this is the second time we've pushed Dr. Burnick, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, in the in the interest of time, we decided that it was not necessarily time sensitive. We just really wanted to make sure the board received the information. Okay, so we can make a determination as to how to get the information to everybody. Um, you can proceed with the support services update. Thank you very much. I have the support service uh, presentation. There are, uh, I believe, five slides to it. You can indicate to me if you would like me to pause for comment or question after each slide as each one of them pertains to a different section of student support services. If there are no questions or comments, we will proceed uh, swiftly. Just proceed through and then we'll save all questions to the end. Perfect. But most of us are a little bit tired, so I don't know how many we'll have. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So the, as already indicated, we have two presentations to the facilities committee uh, for in regards to master facilities planning. The goal is to um, group up with the facilities committee and to make a recommendation for um, going forward and how to proceed for our next board meeting. That is the goal. Uh, and RFP has gone out for lawn and trim. Uh, bids. We have not received any yet, but there is a meeting tomorrow right here in this library at 10 a.m. Uh, or not tomorrow, on Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, for a pre-conference meeting. And then there is uh, the bids are due next week. Um, at, on Thursday, there is a article in the Herald Palladium, or you can reach out to uh, our director of facilities uh, to, to get more information. Uh, we continue to work to bring the buildings into a better state of repair, uh, floor waxing, boiler repairs, and uh, general maintenance has been done. Uh, the boilers do continue to be a point of concern, but we are working diligently to try um, to make sure that everything is uh, up and operational and in um, a state that we can safely continue to have students in our buildings. The there was a request at the last board meeting to uh, to get an update on uh, help desk requests for the facilities. So uh, for the last month, there were 61 open tickets and 61 closed tickets. Um, the uh, actual list of those tickets is uh, the fourth item on the board report. So if you would like to look at those more closely later on, you can do so. I do want to just make a special note that the open and close rate isn't necessarily the best measure for how efficient they are being able to complete their tasks because some projects might be longer or shorter than others and some of them may have different complexities to being able to get them completed. But um, just as a general, general comment towards completion rates, uh, myself and Bud Dash went to a cybersecurity conference uh, conference, uh, more of a workshop meeting with Homeland Security, uh, FBI, state police, and several other uh, selected school districts across the state um, in an effort to make sure that we understood the gravity that we're under for cybersecurity and safety of our um, buildings, our networks, and what we are dealing with um, kind of on a local and global landscape. We are in the beginning stages of forecasting of device needs for our next uh, next academic year. Uh, that's going to include the state of our inventory, state of repairs, our loss rates, and our student student enrollment forecasting. Uh, after about two years of a supply shortage, uh, we have started to receive switches and um, UPSs for our buildings. So those are have begun installation, and we're going to continue those across the district. Within athletics, uh, we had a spring coaches meeting. We have still um, there is possibility for some spring sports if we do have uh, coaches ready and available. Uh, so if you are interested in coaching, uh, please get in contact with our athletic director, but uh, the sports spring sports season started on Monday, uh, and we are looking to have track and field, baseball and softball at this um, point in time. The athletic trainer contract has been signed with Lakeland, 
And the next step is to uh, have um, the position actually filled through, and it should be posted on Lakeland's website. Uh, winter sports uh, finished up uh, last week. Uh, the girls uh, finished the season with a 15 and nine record. And the boys uh, finished with a, uh, or I think I, maybe I have a typo in here. The, the boys had a 15 and seven record um, with uh, a defeat to Ed, uh, Niles last week. Uh, the a special call out to uh, Grant Gondrzik, who had the 1,000 point um, of his uh, senior or his career against Coloma on February 28th. And then we've got a typo on the slide. Family and community um, just wanted to um, thank Whirlpool as their uh, was a donation um, specifically is going to go to our CTE department. So I just wanted to um, say thank you for um, some small uh, supplies that they are going to be supplying to us. I'm also just going to highlight that we have another community bus outing this Friday with three additional locations. Uh, and so, um, you know, help us spread the word um, as we continue to uh, try to get out into our communities. Uh, that swing um, takes us into family and community and our MTSS. We were talking about um, MTSS and PBIS for um, Mr. Burnick or Dr. Burnick. We did have last Friday our second uh, internal MTSS team meeting. Uh, that includes our SEL, um, behavioral interventionists, and restorative uh, practice specialists. So we had that as a district team, and we are talking about our implementation of MTSS teams uh, across the district in each building so that we can look at tiered support. So the presentation that Dr. Bernick was going to provide was going to be talking more in depth about what tiered support looks like and some of the initial things that have been implemented this year around MTSS, PBIS, SEL uh, types of practices. That, I believe, is my update. Thank you. The only question that I have, and then I'll see if there's anyone else that would like to make a comment or ask the question. I'm really excited to know that you, uh, I think you may have mentioned that to me previously, that you went to the cybersecurity um, meeting and that it included Homeland Security, FBI, and State Police. Are we doing anything to funnel what was learned from that down to all of our staff? Yeah, so there's... It's a complicated answer. Um, some of it is internal pr best practices of how to filter and field um, information. Some of it is quality and systems controls that we need to be putting in place. Um, one of them um, that we are quickly rolling out is two-factor authentication for accounts and and things like that. So there, it, it is a, some of it is direct staff training uh, that needs to be put in place um, specifically for next year as we think about fishing training and other aspects of that. Uh, but then some of it also is going to be uh, technical behind the scenes of how we set up our, our firewalls and those types of things to try to keep everything secure. I just wanna make sure just in case someone decides to send an invoice for $30,000 that the staff are aware of what to look for and knowing that it's fraudulent. So that I was just curious about it, but so you answered the question though. Yeah, to, to that specific uh, question, we have had conversations within um, the key departments that would be fielding that information. Okay. And we have, we will never honestly be able to completely prevent that from happening, but we have worked to put up safeguards to uh, minimize our risk. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Corson? You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Corson, for your presentation in all of those areas. Um, I am wondering um, in regards to the help desk 
ticket and the facilities numbers. Thank you for adding that. That's something that I did ask about. And I noticed that you have 61 open, 61 closed. Just a point of clarification. That means that there's nothing left. <laughs> there's no, there are no needs, no facility needs so, because all of the tickets have been closed. And then the other question is, do you have information on the help desk side of that? The technology help desk side? Yes. Okay. Um, I do not have the, the technology help desk side before me, but I can get those numbers for you as well. Uh, from or your point of clarity from the facilities side, those were all of the ones that have been opened since the last board meeting. So that does not necessarily mean that there isn't any open one that happened before that. Uh, but that is when I pulled, when I had Joe, uh, when I had our facilities director pull the report, he pulled it from the last board meeting to this board meeting, and we had 61 within that time frame. And so all of those are closed. But that does not mean that all of our facilities do not have issues. It means that the ones that have been reported into us are the ones that have been addressed. Okay, thank you. So I'm wondering if we can know what's outstanding, like what is all of the number of <clears throat> um, facilities requests that are open versus how many of those are addressed, um, if that makes sense. Is there a specific time frame, or do you want to know the entire system? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, all, all. Okay, we'd like to know what's outstanding. Okay. Is it a way for what you to just decipher, like, what's outstanding? And do you have to have a time frame? Well, so I, I am not in school, dude, on a regular basis, so I will need to utilize um, our facilities director to work through getting that report okay. um the uh what we are going to need to do is we're going to need to make sure that um yeah we, we will we'll make sure we fulfill that request give facilities an update we'll, in their meaning yeah okay um trustee Bowens had a question and then we'll proceed to I think you were, were you just sharing the the March athletic calendar or actually going yeah, over it? I don't think we need to go through every single okay. event you guys Trusty can Bourne. reference it. Is there um, any status on Morton, not Morton, Martindale? I know it was before you. Uh, what kind of status update are you asking for? Uh, report. Uh, I think we may need to get clarity on exactly what you're asking. Okay. So we can do the so now or we could just do so at a later time. All right. Thank you. All right. And so then he shared the March athletic calendar with us, which we can um, take a preview of. Was there anything that you wanted to highlight, Mr. Corson? And if can we maybe um, in our future meetings consider maybe changing their order because I feel like by the time we get to Mr. Corson, we're ready to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. And and I would like for you to not feel rushed. So maybe we need to alternate who goes when so we can be as energetic as we are at the start of the meeting and hearing your presentations. Um, Secretary Triplett had a comment. I just want to tell uh, Chief Corson, thank you as well, um, you know, on your, on your reporting and what have you, and making yourself available. Um, with the tickets and what have you for um, facilities too, we get with Mr. Um, Bullock to make sure that we get that taken care of. Them. And those, that'll be something that we'll ask you to put in the facility when we have a facility meeting to keep us updated on a regular basis. Yep. If that's the all possible. Thank you. All right. Did you have anything to that you wanted to specifically point out in the calendar? No, I don't believe so. Um, okay. The what you're going to notice is that a lot of um, the March dates are basketball and potential for the finals, which we did not qualify for. So you're going to have a, a very empty calendar for March as we get spring sports open. Okay, thank you so much. You are appreciated. You both are appreciated. If I didn't say that to um, 
Chief Waddell. Um, so next we have <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> For the bus, how do you notify the community what area you're Can you speak in the mic, please? How do you notify the community what area the bus you're bringing the bus to? It's on the website, and I have Ms. Liz do the, um, and it's on social media, and I have Ms. I, I'm going to be sending out some calls, like like just like we do for the board board meeting. I think the robo call would be a good idea as well. I like that idea. Because I'm I'm thinking maybe we could like send home notes with the kids, even if it's just a half sheet of paper saying the the bus will be at this location at this time in case folks don't even go to our meet to our website. You know, that way you'll get more people involved. They'll get that's another way of getting it out to them. Thank you for that suggestion, Trustee Raquel Martin. Next, we have human resources. We have separations of employment and new hires. Those are on the consent agenda, staff report H1 and staff report H2. Uh, Dr. Buss, can you please do us the pleasure of presenting those? Reason for board consideration, a list of employees whose employment relationship with the district is or will be separated is submitted to the board each month. Facts and analysis, it is recommended that the Board of Education votes to accept the separation of employment of the following staff. Policy reference, 3140-4140, resignation of professional support staff, strategic plan goal reference nine, Margaret Trout, elementary literacy, co elementary literacy coordinator, resignation 317, date of hire 7, 2021. Victor Walton, academic paraprofessional termination, three, two, effective date 3223, date of hire 8322. Recommended action that the Bend Harden that the Benton Harbor Area Schools Board of Education votes to accept the separation of employment of the aforementioned staff. Okay, so Secretary Tripley, I'm sorry, he just made a request that we actually separate the resignation from the termination. Um, so essentially we would be taking two votes. One would be H1, which would be uh, resignation for Trout, and then H2 for Walton. Um, so the so just to clarify again, H one would be con regarding all the same language regarding the resignation of Margaret Trout, um, as indicated on your paperwork. Is there a motion to approve staff report H one? Is it a motion? I'm asking, is there a motion to approve staff report H one regarding the resignation of Margaret Trout? Yes. The motion has been made by Trustee Bones. Is there a second or support? Second. The motion has been made by Trustee Bones and supported by Trustee Raquette Martin. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding staff report H1? Our Vice HR President Bones. Director's not here. I just wondered if we paid any, um, and I know I'm on the committee, but I want to make it known publicly. Did we pay any um, for anything for certifications or anything, and is it a law or anything that they have to stay within that district for so many years, or they have to do something of that, or could we make that a clause if we did? Uh, Chief Wydell or Dr. Buzz, do either of you have any clarification regarding that question? <laughs> I, I didn't hear the question. Could you His question that? was whether or not um, the individual listed if we pay for any certifications for that individual and if we have a clause in our district policy that says that they have to stay with us for a certain period of time do you know if that's relevant to this particular not that not her position we there were no certification costs paid it, typically with the urtp utrp utrp excuse me utrp there's a portion paid by the district and there's a there's a commitment uh term for those for that position but not for 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 the this particular position. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions regarding H1? Secretary Triplett. The thing that bothers me the most with these particular situations, and he's gonna do elementary literacy coordinator, these people have flown out the conferences. These people are quote unquote, lead work in the literacy program, in the grant. And again, we had people that applied for this position from Benton Harbor who was qualified and who was looked over. And this happens repeatedly. It happens repeatedly. And we sit here and allow this foolishness to 
to, 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 to go forth. And it's unacceptable. There were, there, were, there were teachers and everybody from this community that's been in this community for years, still been committed to this, to this community. And every time we have these people, just people coming in, and when things don't go their way, they are gone. Now, all of this training, they've been to workshops. My understanding, people have been to San Diego, California. They've been to all these different things. It, now, these people are gone. And this has to stop. I cannot sit here and be complicit in this foolishness. I, and, and please, please, please. It's just not right. And, it, 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 and this is not something that just happened. This happened repeatedly over and over and over again, whether she went to a conference, whether she went to California, whatever. These people are in these positions, milk these grants, milk these funds, and leave. And, and, and then our teachers sit over here, the ones that struggling, struggling, been in the district for years, pay free, 10 years, eight years, still here, and the people treat them like they garbage. I'm not talking about what I heard, and nobody got me fooled either. And I really, I just don't like it. It's not right. And we sit up on this board and look straight ahead and let this kind of injustice happen to the people from this community, people who have been dedicated to this community for years. And it's not right. And I want that on the record. Thank you, Secretary Triplett. Any additional questions or comments regarding staff report H1? And I misspoke previously because H2 is the hire of new staff. So um, if we're separating Mr. Walton from H1, it would technically need to be H3. But at this particular time, we're still on staff report H1. If there's no additional questions or comments, I'll ask the secretary, Madam Chair, you have the floor. Um, the only reason that we have right, right now is resignation. <clears throat> and I don't know uh, this person personally, but when we look at the conditions, in which we have millions of dollars and we are not investing it in our staff, in our students, in the culture and climate and the environment, a safe environment, we cannot be surprised when we see a resignation. We must first at this table do our part to make sure that all staff has everything that they need to teach our students. And if we're not making sure that we're being good stewards of the money, then we cannot be surprised when people leave because nobody has time for that foolishness, nobody. And so that's our responsibility and that's our power to make sure that we're using our resources effectively and efficiently. And then we'll see less resignations. Thank you, Trustee Gavin. Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote for staff report H1? And I do have children at home and a sitter that- oh, you ready, ready to call the vote? Yeah, you can call the vote. I just wanna make sure you, I don't know how much, I don't think anticipate will go much longer, but I do have to be home by 1030. So if we're not quite there, Trustee, Vice President Bournes will have to chair. Um. Secretary Triple, please call the vote for staff report H1. President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bowen. Yes. Secretary Triple. No. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. To change minds to yes as well. <laughs> Motion here. Okay, so make sure it's noted in the minutes, Liz, that Secretary Triplett is the yes as well. Um, next, technically, because we separated H1, um, this is H3, so that we can do it as a separate. You said H1 was the H2 was the no, nope. yep, I did initially, but then I realized that H2 already existed, and that is the 
higher of the honestly liz at this point i really don't if you want to make walton h2 and make higher in h3 that's perfectly fine with me okay so we're going to do this as h2 this is the resolution for uh victor walton as indicated but again the the resolution number is h2 due to us separating the consent agenda Secretary Triplett, can you, um, is there a motion to approve H2? So moved. Is there a sec? I didn't know that you were Mr. Walton. You, if you would like to address the board, you can come yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. First of all, this is the Hold on one second. Can, we go, can he request the full session? He, he can recall, uh, request a closed session if you like. I know that the paperwork was sent to, um, was sent prior to. Can I, see, can I to... see that, sir? Yeah. My apologies. It's a pleasure to meet you. You as well. And I was under the last question and it said, though, comments that I can come in and make a comment. Okay, so it, it indicates that you may attend the meeting and make comments during public comment section of the agenda. You may also ask the board to consider um, recommendations and your documents in closed session by submitting a written notice by March 1st. Um, so if the board is does, is not, I know that we're not necessarily in a um, in a um, public comment opportunity. You may not have known that that was your opportunity to speak earlier. No, you didn't get that. There's so thinking public, of this closed session here, based on public comment. Is that now? Hold on one second. Are you wanting to address this before the public, or would your preference be to do it in a closed session? So you have no, you have no, I, that's, we're just trying to make sure that you're comfortable with having an opportunity yes, to speak before everyone yes. now. Okay. So if there's no disagreement before with the board, then we will um, give you an opportunity to, to speak at this particular time. All right. I can't say I'll introduce myself. My name is Victor Van Paul, and I was working at, uh... Hello. Okay. <laughs> I was working at Martin Luther King, MLK, as a parapro and working for this uh, principal, Raquette. And she stated that I should lose my job as far as a reoccurrence of a student and abandonment is the term she has. As in, dear, can you hear me? Do I need to talk? I can to hear you. you. Okay. Their election of uh, duty, so, so the statement says. Now, I worked there since August. And the thing of that is, she says one student, one child I should work with. Myself, not just the one child, I work with a host of kids. I did stuff in the library, not the library, the cafeteria and other students as well. And for this incident to happen, I don't think I deserve that. And I believe I should be given another opportunity. If that's what she wants me to do, to work with just one child, opposed to other students in the building, then I'll do that. But I'll just say, I would like to have another opportunity. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if we, did we already have a motion to approve or anything at this particular time on the floor before he made his comment? Okay. Not before we split it. It was brought to um, HR committee. Okay, so no one has made a motion to approve or anything for H2? No. Okay. And I know that this is information that was brought to HR committee and I missed that particular um, committee meeting. I'm asking at this time, is there a motion um, to approve H2? Is this something that the board feels comfortable taking vote on at this particular time? If there's a motion, then I'll proceed with accepting the motion and we can move forward. Okay. 
Um, no, you yeah, you're, you're, yes, okay. sir. Thank you so much. And thank you for your patience. Um, I've never been, um, I've gone, I've done tours in the building and things of that nature, but we don't always get a chance to meet our staff. And so I appreciate your patience and staying here through um, this particular report. Trustee Bones, what is it that you were attempting to ask me? Could it, instead of approving this, could we have a motion to have our human resource attorney group investigate? Oh, what we can do is, is table the motion. Okay. okay. If that's what you all would feel more comfortable with at this particular time. Okay. So is there um can I ask another question? Yes. With that being said, when you say table, I'm to assume it's going to be a decision made. Table means we're not gonna vote at this particular time. I don't know if you have any idea. We will have to have Dr. Buss follow back up with you on that. Yeah, I have been receiving sub-assignments, even as to come back to Martin Luther King and so sub-assignments. Uh, so you were working as a parapro. I haven't taken it, but I was given an opportunity to have it. Uh, last week, toward the whole week, at, uh, a youth advocate at uh, Fairplane Junior High. Okay. And then I had an opportunity to come here, but I didn't take them because of this situation. Okay. To come here to high school and work. But I did not take it, waiting for this opportunity to come up and speak for myself. So Dr. Buss, can you can you take a look into that? Because I, I don't I, I don't really know how it would work with if he with the yes, trustee Bourne. I do know those are third parties that you, like at your staff and everything, they said, no? No, it's just through the system, the Harvard system. I still have an opportunity to apply to go back to at your staff. I do. This particular position that is listed is through Benton Harbor Area Schools, yes. correct, yes. Dr. Buzz? That's correct. What you are saying is that you have an opportunity to accept sub work through edu staff. I've got Cost through the Benton Harbor Area Schools to go to um, that's correct. But it's paid through Edge Staff, correct, Dr. Yeah. Bud? It, it, that should have been through Edge Staff. I don't. I'm not aware of any any calls being made outside of of Edge Staff. Okay, so I I'm not sure. Like as stated, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if there's anyone at the particular at this particular time that feels comfortable voting on this um so if there is there a motion to and if we need to make a special meeting to come back specifically for this purpose because i know things like this can't really hang in the wind um mm -hmm. trustee bowens i would put a motion on the floor that we table this and call for a special meeting no later than well no later than monday of next week is okay um is there a second or support support Okay, so the motion has been made by Trustee Bowens and supported by uh, Vice President Bowens. I put respect on your title, sir. And um, supported by Trustee Doyle. Any additional questions? Oh, we don't comment once the motion is tabled. Secretary Triplett, can you call for a motion to table H2? A vote. <laughs> a vote to table H2. President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bowen. Yes. Secretary Triplett. Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion care. Okay, so thank you so much for coming before us, sir. Um, so what has happened is that we've, we've made a decision not to take a vote at this particular time. Um, we'll be scheduling a follow-up meeting. It'll probably be extremely brief, brief just to allow the board to get um, more details on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So in the meantime, since this person, since he is not terminated, uh, well, we could talk about it in our HR. Uh, we did not vote to terminate because no one has the power to terminate but the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. But since he is not terminated, I guess what's the status as far as pay, yeah. um, leave, all those kind of things? I guess we could clarify from human resources mm -hmm. on this matter. Liz, what were you attempting to get, Mike? Sure, I had a motion that said we're going to motion to table H2. 
Monday, yeah, we're going to attempt to get to, we're going to see if we can hold a meeting prior to Monday to get it resolved. Even if it's 15 minutes, that was the motion that passed. Today is Tuesday, so I want everybody to be aware of that. How can I say this for you guys? I really have respect and admiration for you guys to do this. Now, this is not an easy task. Sure, I am. It's not an easy task. Thank you. <laughs> I know that we placed the motion for Monday because it's an urgent thing. But if we, um, hopefully we can get it accomplished if we find that we can't, that's pretty quick, but I know we want to do it quickly. Um, now we're on H3, H2 was altered to H3. And um, I've noticed that one particular issue, there may be a member of the board that would not be able to take the vote on the report if it's combined. So we would need to actually separate um, the CTE director as a, as a um, report of his own, and my apologies for not noticing that before. So staff report H3 would be for Fisher Smith, Kevin Moore, Cynthia Batiste, and Paul Steitzmitz, and then we would do H4 Steitzmitz. We would do H4 for M. Shannon Raquette. Um, so Dr. Buss, I'll allow you to um, to present the staff report. I just don't want a particular member of the board to have to abstain from the full vote. Fine. Um, and you can you can present us as quickly as you'd like. We have it before us. Submitted for board consideration to approve the employment of staff in accordance with the revised code and other general laws of Michigan okay. facts and analysis recommended that the board Approve the superintendent's recommendation for the hire of the following personnel. Policy of reference 3120-4120, employment of professional staff, strategic plan goal reference, personnel leadership. Benton Harbor Area Schools will recruit, hire, develop, and retain, retain the best staff to improve student outcomes. Fisher Smith, TNT Social Studies High School, effective date 327. Kevin Moore, TNT, sixth grade social studies, Fair Plain Middle School, effective date 327. Cynthia Batiste, paraprofessional, MLK Junior, three, effective date 327. Paul Stymes, library media specialist, Bill, blah, high, Ben Harbor Area High School, and Fair Plain Middle School, effective date 327 23. Recommendation that Ben Harbor Area Schools. Board of Education votes to approve the employment of the aforementioned staff. Is there a motion to approve staff report H3? Support. The motion has been made by Secretary Triplett and supported by Vice President Bowens. Questions, comments, or concerns regarding staff report H3? Hearing none, Secretary Triplett, please call the vote. President Robinson? Yes. Vice President Bowens? Yes. Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gannett. Yes. Motion carried. All right. Next, we have staff report H4. Uh, Dr. Buss, you've already read all of the data that is here for us. I'd just like for you to read the person's name and uh, effective date, et cetera, and then the recommended action. Uh, M. Shan M. Shannon Rocket, CTE Director, Building Central Office. Central Administration. To Central Administration um, for the remainder of the school year, effective date 3 15 23. Okay, and the recommended action is that the Ben Harbor A Schools Board of Education votes to approve the employment of the aforementioned staff. Is there a motion to approve staff report H4? Support. Is it so moved? Still moved, sorry. All right, the motion has been made by Vice President Bowens. Is there a second or support? Support. The motion was made by Vice President Bowens and supported by Secretary Triplett. Any questions, comments, or concerns? You have the floor. And I might not see your finger, Ms. Gavin, so you have to speak up. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt. No, go ahead. Okay, so I'm concerned about this position. First of all, a CTE director position for $5,000. I'm trying to come up with a word that's not disrespectful, but that pay is disrespectful. 
Um, and um, let's be clear, this person is the principal at MLK. They are not at Central. Uh, they're not here in this building. They're not able to supervise anybody as the full-time principal at MLK. Two hats are for two people. And um, I do believe that she's a very capable person. Um, and she could do either job very well, but both jobs is just unfair as a full-time CTE director. But if she is going to step in, I'm grateful that she's willing to do that as she is certified. And I believe that she could take care of the paperwork. And so I could see this, I would like to amend this to be an interim CTE director position or something like that. Um, but to be honest with ourselves, hiring a CTE director at $5,000 for the year, knowing that they're other, at, at another building, that's not taking this position seriously to me. Dr. Buss, is this through the end of the year or is this for next year? This would be uh, interim through the end of the year per the recommendation of uh, Chief Waddell. So, we so this is just through June 30th? Yes, ma'am. Okay, any additional questions, comments, or concerns? I, so are, are they calling this position? I thought it was the stipend. I didn't know they were calling this position as the, the NCE director. It's stipend. And it, it, so what will happen is it, it will be prorated until the end of the year. So it's not even the full stipend. So it's, not, it's, full, it's, it's, not, it's not the... You've had, well, you've already had somebody in, from my understanding, at one point, Mr. Corson, um, well, Mr. Mr. Rockett, then Mr. Rockett Shannon, then Mr. Corson, then Mr. Rockett Shannon. So oh. this right here, uh, we're asking right now for her to, to be in it. So to say that this is a director of CTA, I have agreed with uh, Ms., uh, with, with Trustee Gavin. So it's not a director, but this is from the curriculum committee that, that we need this person in place at this particular time for the few classes that we already have. And to, and to submit the and, paperwork. Yeah, so we don't have the full CTE program, but we need somebody in this position. Is that not correct, Ms. Waddell? Thank you, Secretary Triplett. That is correct. Um, it would be very helpful to have support, especially with someone that has expertise in this space until we decide as a district what we're doing next. Okay, so I, I, I thought I think that, said that we had to have it because there were some things that had to be signed. It had to be a 50 of a CTE. Right. So, so yes. It, that this was just like to do some help. Yeah, that's what that's what that is. Yes, to help with the application process, to help with recruiting for advisory committees, to help with the instructional designs that we have to do to get ready for our September application. So, my hope is that we can hire the CTE it. stipend one or someone else that might apply if we don't vote this in. But we need someone in place until we decide as a district what we're going to do if it's going to become a full-time position. This is to support the efforts right now. Okay, and I actually, I have to, um, I'm going to try to make it, but my husband has to work at 11 o'clock and he has our children. So I'm trying to get, I'm trying to make it, but I may have to step out um, and Madam, leave. Madam President. You have the floor. I was asking if this can be amended to say interim CTE director. Support that. Is that, would that, would that be problematic? Dr. Butts, I mean, the way that I see it, it's a $5,000 stipend. If we move to it becoming a full time, that's going to be a whole new, you know, somebody's going to have to reapply to that position. So it would wipe out, I think, this stipend position. So calling it interim or not, I don't think it really makes a difference. I would for I for, for for clarity for and, 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 okay. and for, for safety, we could just call it interim until the end of the year because it's prorated already anyway. It's not even the full 5000 It's prorated. But she wouldn't be she would she wouldn't be a director. So I think if, if we if we come up with a term and, and close it out, CTE coordinator, and then we move in that in that in that in that space, so we won't have an, even the right. thing of that this is a director, this is a coordinator of CTE services that been our very school. But but my concern, I'm sorry, guys, and, and if an individual has applied for a position that is titled a certain thing, 
and I believe this person is interviewed and you come back and you change the title, then that's something that's potentially problematic because that's not what they applied for. And I'm saying that because I've experienced it before. Um, so I just, that would be a point of concern for me. And just, just in speaking with Principal Rockett, she's, her heart is here. She knows that we need the support. She's not in it, trying to be in it long-term forever and ever and ever. She wants to support the district because the need is there. Um, just to put that on the record. And then Paul, Paul might have some more information in regards to changing the name to coordinator. Just saying. I, I just want to give you the scope. Has anyone seen my bag? I'm so sorry. I cannot find it. Go ahead, Mr. Course. I'm sorry. That, just to give you a scope of what needs to be done officially from the end of the year, we need to have somebody in place and have their name on the document because we have a report due to the state and to OCTE for each of our open programs. And that must be completed by the end of the year by our CTE director. Director. Uh, so have to be the interim they director. can be interim. 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 I'm sorry, yeah. do the chair. So I guess my my I would caution us on changing the last part of it, but the interim I don't think would have any impact. Thank you. Okay, so it sounds like the board is in support of approval of staff report H4 with an adjustment of the title to interim CTE director. Um, so is there, I think, was there a motion on the floor already for approval? Asked to amend it. Who made, who made the initial motion? Okay, so you are you all comfortable with the amendment to the amending your motion to include the interim within yes. the title? Yes. Okay. So the motion was made by Trustee Bowens and Secretary Triplett, and it's been amended to include the title of interim CTE director. Um, if there's no additional questions, comments, or concerns, Secretary Triplett, please call the vote. President Robinson? Yes. Trustee Bowens? Yes. Vice yes. President Bowens? Secretary Triplett? Yes. Trustee Doyle? Yes. Trustee Gavin? Yes. Welcome, Karen. All right. Next on the agenda, we have um, we have old business and new business. Then there's open public comments, superintendent announcements, and board member comments. I am going to pass the meeting to Trustee Bowens um, because I know we can be quite lengthy in our comments. Um, is there any out? Oh, okay. Is there any old business? I would like to remove my complaint against you against any agenda. Oh, well, okay. President thank you. Robinson. Yeah. I'm sorry to break protocol. When we were moving fast during the facilities part, I forgot to make one quick announcement. So I would like to, if I can, just take 30 more seconds. You have the floor. Uh, Edwana Love was named as our custodian of the month. She was here earlier in the she was here early in the evening, so we will be presenting this to her tomorrow. But um, I did want to just make the board aware that we are recognizing her for her contributions. So you could have let us know that and we would have given you the ability to do that at the start of the agenda. So we, we can talk about the procedure. And if we forward. can maybe yeah. have her come back in April so we can give her recognition appropriately. Sounds good. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, any new business? All right, anyone for open public comment? Hearing none, Dr. Buss, do you have announcements or comment? They can wait to April. Okay, if it's anything pertinent, you can share it uh, in each of your committee meetings if it's anything that we've missed. Um, board member announcements and comments, Trustee Gavin? I have none. Trustee Raquel Martin? I Trustee Doyle? I have none. <laughs> Secretary Triplett? Yes, I do not. <laughs> I have none. <laughs> Vice President Bowens? None. And I have none as well. So thank you all for... Um, for for that so that we we can we can move forward um is there a motion to adjourn support so moved. So, moved. Oh, so moved. okay the motion has been made by secretary triplet and supported by 
Vice President Bowens, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding adjournment? Hearing none, Secretary Triplet can before I say that, we do, Liz, I do need for you to try to touch base with the board so we can try to get this follow-up um, meeting for the that staff report that's um, hanging in the wind. Just don't want that to be overlooked. Um, Secretary Triplett, can you please call the vote for adjournment? Yes, ma'am. And on this 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 roll call and voting sheet, it, it's just too complex. You don't have to do that. It's too many missing pieces. Thank you. Um, President Robinson. Yes. Vice President Bowen. Yes. Secretary Triplett. Yes. Trustee Doyle. Yes. Trustee Rocket Martin. Yes. Trustee Gavin. Yes. Motion care meeting adjourned. Hey, that's what time meeting. is it adjourned? I'm sorry, Trustee Bowen. The meeting is adjourned officially at 10 35 p.m.